All right, everybody, sorry. Uh, hello and welcome, everybody, to the Golden Coast Invitational, sponsored by Esports College and Career Pathways. I am Kanashi, and I will be your host for this week. Um, 
yeah, we still have some great Valorant action for you guys, including schools from all over North America. And, you know, this is the fourth week of our nine-week event, so we're almost halfway there. But we still have a ton of action coming for you, just to showcase all the great talent that we have that the collegiate scene has to offer. Um, once again, we are sponsored by Esports College and Career Pathways. Um, they support college esports community scenes, and they also help, you know, with sponsoring some of these smaller events, helping out with prize pools and all that. Um, they also sponsor Hive, which supports women's colleges across the U.S. And for more information, please follow them on social media and at their website, esportsccp.gg. Um, also, make sure to follow RU Esports on Twitch and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of this. Um, the first week of this or the first weeks of this tournament, by the way, are going to be played in a best of one format, um, and will be played in a round robin style, just so we could figure out the best records, and we can slowly move that towards the playoffs and figure out who will be playing there coming in November. Um, every map is important, um, and we do count every single map. Um, so. These schools aren't just here for bragging rights, by the way. There's a whole bunch of competition as well. First place will be going home with $1,000 and the title of Golden Coast Invitational Champions. Second place will be going home with $500. And third place will be going home with $250. We still have a great show for you guys. Um, so we're going to hone in on the first match that we have today, which will be Syracuse Orange versus the University of Waterloo Gold. Syracuse University Orange will be leading with extremely spooky Ballas NA, Spring, Cards, Roku, and Juicy T. Uh, this team is stacked with Platinum through Immortal players and are looking to run through this region. Now for their opponents, the Waterloo Warrior Golds will be rolling out with, to <laughs> with Toph, This Is Crown, da uh, Damo, Vex, and Rhodesy. So this team has a wide range of players, ranging from Diamond to Radiant. So both of these teams aren't that far off, um, except for the exception of a couple players. Um, so the real question today, will Syracuse Orange will be taking home the win, or will Waterloo Warriors be taking home the gold? Uh, to bring all, all the action for today, we have Artie's and Brody once again. Uh, fellas, take it away. How are you doing today? I'm good. As, I'm good. How are I'm you just glad you're you? back. Excited I'm so back. glad that you're yeah. back, my friend. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I had a good time without you, uh, Mister. Uh, you know, the cast we had last week did a great job, and uh, he was definitely holding his own. But uh, you know, the dynamic duo of Arties and Brody, you know, we just we go together like peanut butter and jelly. Yes, yes, and it's time to <clears throat> it's time to return to some to some competitive Valorant. I'm excited. I'm pretty pumped. Uh, it had me a, uh, had me a little bit hungry with with a week off, so I'm excited to get into this next match between Syracuse and Waterloo. Absolutely. Now uh, I'm looking at the uh, the player sheet here, but for uh, Waterloo specifically, and I'm noticing that uh, you know we've got uh, uh, a couple different uh, a couple different players that are in here that have some unique qualities about them. Uh, Rodzi, the commercially licensed uh, pilot, looks like he is not actually here today uh is that uh is that just me uh where i wonder who the fillers are then for this I'm uh not too sure i think oh am i just am i blind am i completely blind here it looks like i no, am no you're not yeah you're not we blind. got uh i i'm looking at the names here and they uh i think we do have a fill waiting for us i'm looking at uh university of waterloo we got this dynamic duo here of damo and domo i'm Waiting for them to uh, to see what we're going to be seeing out of this. But, you know, I'm super <coughs> looking forward to today. Like uh, Kanashi was telling us before, we're going to be seeing a lot of Immortal 3 Radiant. A uh, few players are going to be in the diamond range, but, you know, it's going to be a very, very fun day. Yeah, it does look like it shakes out pretty evenly overall, though. Uh, Damo is the one who is who is the resident Radiant in this game, but he says specifically in the beta, so I'm not too sure um, if that if that, you know, Radiant level still carries over to the to today, but it is definitely something to keep an eye on. And then the two Immortal Threes coming out from 
the Syracuse side being uh, Cards and Spring. So those are definitely some people to keep your eyes on for this specific BO1 matchup. Absolutely. And uh, another thing is that uh, it's looking like uh, the first map today is going to be on Bind. I don't think that you and I have actually casted on Bind for uh, this series yet. We have not casted Bind yet. We've only really uh, we've only done Haven in a sense, so this is a nice change of pace. Um, tell us what we need to know about Bind. Well, uh, well, with Bind, you know, Bind is uh, you know the the map with the teleporters, as everyone likes to call it, uh, since nobody can seem to remember the map names here. It's just you know jump in, shoot for an hour and a half, get really <laughs> mad, and uh, well, Bind is uh, you know there's a lot of stuff going on with Bind, specifically with um, you know the fact that you've got those two sites with very easy rotation between them, utilizing those teleporters. So this map specifically, even more so than um, than the other ones, even Ascent, uh, you know, you're really going to be uh, banking on your Sentinels here to defend the sites. And so Cipher, you know, has been a meta pick uh, throughout this entire series, throughout all of Professional Valorant. You need a Cipher, um, and this map is extremely dependent on that, as well as Killjoy. Uh, I, b I believe that this map is Killjoy's best map. Um, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, well, Ascent is actually better for Killjoy because of the way that you can lock down the sites here. But Bind, specifically, um, you can just dominate B site with a uh, Killjoy. And it is just so, so immensely powerful. We see so many meta strats being posted on Reddit every single week of like, oh, this is the best way to set up B site is Killjoy. Oh, this is the best. So, you know, I'm hoping that we do see a Killjoy in this match today just to see, uh, you know, what, we, what, uh, what the teams are going to be able to pull off with it. Right, so definitely somebody to keep an eye on whether or not both teams opt for a Killjoy or both teams opt for a Cypher. Or I think that's definitely been um, a major talking point of all of the games so far. You know, a couple weeks ago you had one team with a Killjoy, one team with a Cypher, and the dynamic of how that how those games play out can just determine on what uh, which one of those two meta picks you pick or what your strategy is going into defending a site and then how you can even use some of those characters on attack to lock down map control flanks and stuff like that. So definitely a good thing to keep an eye on is the use of Killjoy and Cypher throughout, especially a map like Bind. Absolutely. And um, now, unfortunately, Valorant, uh, you know, Riot Games keeps breaking this game, so uh, we are unable to actually see uh, what what uh, characters teams are choosing until we actually fully get into it. So uh, the match is about to begin, but... Uh, you know, the casters are kind of stuck here looking at a white screen. I can hear yeah, we're I can hear something here. happening. Here we go. Now we're oh. able to look at it, and let's see what the go. team stack is going to be. Looking like Waterloo here is going to be picking up uh, the Killjoy rather than the Cypher here. And we are going to be seeing one Initiator, one Controller, and two Duelists on the side of Waterloo. Uh, on Syracuse, we are going to be having uh, one... We are going to be having the one Sentinel in place of the uh, Cypher there. And then uh, we're also going to be seeing, again, the Controller, Initiator, and then two Duelists. And uh, so both teams opting for the Omen and the Sova. Uh, and then we've got the uh, you know little variation Duelist, or Rays versus the Phoenix. But uh, I'm super excited to see this Killjoy versus Cypher, especially since we're going to be seeing Waterloo here starting on defense. Let's go into the match here. We're going to be watching... What happens here is the attacking side, they're going to be playing, uh, this is a very standard setup for Bind. Uh, what we're seeing is all of the attackers spreading out across site here. Looks like Vex on Waterloo is going to be picking up the very first kill here on Juicy here. Syracuse is going to be down one player here in this first match. And uh, let's see what's going to happen. It is going to be a 5v4 situation here. The attacker is still looking for anything here. You see him stacking up here. Roku going to be picking up a kill on Vex here. Nice trade out. Bringing this solidly into a 4v4 here. Now, the attackers still aren't rotating here. The defenders, though, looks like they are going to be rotating here, leaving a lot of the Killjoy utility on B site. And let's see what they're going to be able to pull off here. Watching his cards, going to just be uh, stacking up down mid here, pushing up with Omen. And uh, let's see what Spring is going to be able to do here. We see the Sentinel utility go up here as Roku takes out Toph. That's going to be very, very bad for Waterloo here, as Waterloo is now going to be down to just three players here. And no duelists either. Both their duelists are down. Damo, though, he takes out extremely spooky. There we go. Love those ghost plays here. But uh, Roku going to be picking up a 3k, taking out Crown. Damo going to be getting a double kill, though. And Damo finishing it off, taking out cards. For a second, I was thinking this was going to be Roku's solo round. He leads off with a 3k, getting all the entry frags into that into that bomb site. But as it turns out, the retake was too strong. Damo with a great double coming through that smoke with his classic. And that locks down the first pistol round 
in favor of, of Waterloo. Here, Absolutely. And uh, you gotta say, I got to say, just looking at this uh, first round here, you got to love that dynamic duo of Damo and Domo. And God, that's so much fun to say. Um, and uh, yeah, you're right. Roku picking up a 3K. The only kills on his team here. Let's see if they're going to be able to, uh, you know, f change things up a little bit as Syracuse goes into the next round here. I hope I'm saying that university right. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, Syracuse. It's Syracuse. Syracuse. All right. Yes. <laughs> professional as, as I am here. Let's see what Cards going to be able to do here. He's going to be pushing up in mid. A uh, little bit of a jet fight here is Toph and Cards. Looks like neither of them want to peek first, though. Extremely Spooky going to be getting some information with his drone, though, but he's getting counter drone here. Cards going to be leading out. He's not ready for it. It's Toph with a judge. Going to be taking him out immediately. Bringing another one-man advantage here to Waterloo. Let's see what's going to happen. This is Crown. Going to be cleaning it up. Get a double kill. Oh, my God. And Syracuse going to be down to just two players here. Let's see what they're going to be able to do here as Raze gets ready to fight out with Tove. Vex jumps right up. Takes out Roku here. Domo takes out Juiced. And that's going to be the round here. Flawless round for Waterloo. Yes, it was a flawless run for Waterloo. I, I mean, they were against very limited pistols. Definitely a full save coming out, which is definitely smart from the attackers. But um, they did kind of predict the B hit 3 towards B, 2 towards A. And I do like the judge play up in Hookah. It's just such a tight angle that it's... Unless you have, like, a bunch of utility invested, it's such a hard thing to clear out. And you really can't peek Absolutely. And like I was saying before this match started here, that Killjoy... Uh, this looks like this is the meta... Killjoy set up here. You see, you've got the alarm bot and you've got the um, you've got the grenades all set up to where as soon as they push out of hookah, they are just trapped because they have to take out the turret. Then, oh no, I got alarm botted. Oh my god, where did this grenade come from? And unless you're you're actively clearing utility like it's Rainbow Six, you know you're going to be dealing with a lot of problems on B site. So let's see what's going to happen here. It looks like uh, Syracuse is going to be leading a push up against. Uh, be long here spring hopefully he doesn't get uh killed out by that sova there just like last time here this is crown uh he knows how to hold this angle we've seen him do it before looks like spring picked the right time to peek that as the drone came out here he took out the turret and the drone gonna just be waiting here we see that uh we see yep we see this omen come out here and we're also seeing crown push in but he's not gonna be able to capitalize on again spring was ready for it here he saw what happened last time he was able to play for it See, Vex gonna still be holding a site like his life depends on it, which it does. He's the only person on there. Let's see what's gonna happen there. Is three attackers are gonna be pushing in here. Roku gonna be ulting here to get some info. Gonna be failing that flash, but Juice gonna be taking out Vex. Gonna be now a three v five here. Looks like Syracuse. They kind of know what they're dealing with now, and they have fixed the left. problems from the first two match or first two rounds. They are gonna be changing this up here a little bit. Let's see what's gonna happen. Is extremely spooky. Gets a spike down here. Damo is going to be flashing and blinding out. Let's see what Toph is going to do with that judge. Oh, no. He looks the wrong way. Roku going to be getting a double kill, though. Damo trading it out, but Roku getting a triple kill to end the round here. Roku with another triple kill. That's a great first gun round coming out from Syracuse here. Um, definitely got him on the rotate. I mean, they only destroyed two pieces of utility. They broke the Killjoy turret and Sova's drone, and it, and it prompted a two-man rotation from the A site to the B site. And not only that, but Dama wins the first duel within his smoke. It's it's a weird it's a weird play coming out from the defenders, but definitely a great gun round and way to capitalize on it from Syracuse. Hopefully they can carry this momentum. Uh, even though the guns are pretty even this round, even an operate even an op on absolutely. Two and uh, yeah, just like you were saying, the guns are pretty stacked uh, evenly here. Is typically what happens. Uh, the economy levels out around the fourth round, and uh, I'm super excited to see what Tova is going to be able to do. Tova is going to be actually sitting out with a. Uh, uh, just looking on A main here, and he's not going to be finding anything as Syracuse is going to be kind of stacking around the sides of the map here. We see the uh, the jet on the attacking side pushing up into Hookah, but not pushing out of it just yet. Looks like they're kind of waiting, and let's see what's going to happen as uh, it's kind of a slow attack round. Uh, that Cypher could be utilizing his Cypher cam here to get some info, but he's not going to be playing on it yet. He doesn't want to give out any information here, but we are looking at B site here. We see Omen, Sova, and Jet stacking out onto B site, getting ready to push in. But Toph going to be using that op to take out Roku, and that's going to start the round off here. Let's see what's going to happen. 50 seconds on the clock. The attackers have to move fast. Looks like they're going to be stacked out on a, a B site here, but Cards pushes right out. Doesn't see Domo in the corner there. Domo takes him out, but Spring and Extremely Spooky going to be able to take them. Uh, get a double kill here. Evening the odds here to a 3v3. The defenders still spread out between B and A. Let's see what's going to happen here as the attackers are going to be... 
falling out of Octagon here. No, they're gonna be teleporting! They're gonna be teleporting on the A side here, and it looks like the defenders heard that they are gonna be already rotating on there, and that was definitely not the right call. Now, while the attackers did have to deal with that Killjoy utility, they were kind of uh, in the in the right to push up B. They had a one-man advantage, but Vex and Toe pick up one kill each. Kshuthuki taking out Toe, though. Let's see what's gonna happen. He's not gonna be able to get another one here, and Vex going to be finishing off the round here, three to one. You know, such a risky play from... <laughs> from the jet there, oh, from cards. Diving into the B site, not knowing the triple stack was there, trying to take out that Sova while he was droning, and was met with a crossfire from two other defenders. Now that was kind of a huge gamble because it definitely brought the, it brought them down a single player, and then from there, the rotate did not pan out the way it did. They got lucky when Toph missed his initial op shot, but they still got cleaned up on the site from the hiding, um, you know, uh, A player, which was Vex, I think, on the raise. So he's been doing a great job of locking down this A site, even when his whole team Absolutely. Is we are going to be seeing Toph yep. lead out here with a very aggressive defense here. He's going to be running into cards. Is he going to be able to get it? No, he's not. Cards going to be able to capitalize on it. Let's see what's going to happen here. Vex going to be picking up Roku, though, bringing this into a 4v4 here. Nice mechanics to uh, get out of dodge there because you have to remove that dragon dart. Now Vex just saw Jet here and let's see what's going to happen. He's going to be pushing out around. Is he going to be ready for it? No. Oh my god. He was the flick on the cards. Going to be now a 4v3 situation here as the attackers look like they're going to be pushing out on B site here. Crown going to be doing what he can to defend. Crown kind of out of his element here with a phantom here. We know that he's really good with that stinger. Let's see. Nice drone to get some information here. Uh, Spooky still going to be doing what he can to hold that angle and make sure that, uh, you know, Crown's not going to be able to get an inch here. Damo going to be rotating around, checking out on hookah, but there's going to be nobody there. Uh, the defenders kind of stacking 2 per site here just in case. Now, last time they gambled and they said, hey, let's all go A site. And they were lucky that the attackers rotated to A site. But uh, this time, it looks like they're going to be, um, you know, playing their odds of just saying, hey, we've got four people. Just uh, split two per site and uh, just left. hold this because, you know, um, Syracuse is pretty volatile. They've been rotating extremely fast here and uh, looks like they're just going to be, uh, we're going to be seeing this happen again, the rotations. Now, they don't have time to re-rotate here, so this is going to be the site they're committing to. So the defenders are going to have to go out as soon as they hear these shots go off here. Juice takes out Vex. Left. Which is a really big pickup for Syracuse here. But with only six seconds on the clock, your Juiced has to get this bomb down. If Domo pushes him and cancels that plan, it's over. Looks like he wasn't able to cancel it, but let's see what's going to happen. Killjoy wishing she had some utility left over to utilize there. But Juice going to be taking out Domo here, bringing this into a 2v3. Still anyone's game. Juice goes down to 8 HP. What is going to happen here? It's going to be the Omen and Sova duo here. Let's watch this as Crown. Is he going to be cleaning up that kill on Juice? Yes, he is. Is he going to be able to take out the other Sova? No, he's not. He's going to be peeking into two people here. It's just going to be up to Damo here. Now, nice pings going out. Extremely spooky. Going to be, uh, you know, uh, revealing. But he's not going to be able to find where Domo is here. But uh, Damo does know where everything is here. It looks like Spring is going to be able to pick him up here. Even though he had that preemptive information here, the 1v2 is just so hard. That last second <clears throat> call going to the A site there definitely worked out in the favor of the attackers here and that is definitely such a risky play but i mean if you get it done you get it done syracuse is going to be happy with that one good post plan positions making sure that they couldn't get any peaks for free everything was going to be traded immediately because of the position the post plan positions you had two players stacked up towards that teleporter and you haul and then the other one in the cubby and it worked out perfectly for them now it's going to force the defending team onto these lower guns, and we'll see how this is going to shake out, see if they can get it. Absolutely, text. and uh, looks like the attackers are actually going to be going extremely aggressive on this round here. We see a nice A stack here, three on A main, two on bathrooms here. Let's see what's oh, going to happen. Toph! Is Toph going to be able to stack up? No, he's not. Cards gets a kill here, but Vex going to be able to ult out on spring. Cards picking up a double kill there, taking out Toph and Vex. So what's going to happen is Roku going to be using his ultimate here. Going to be peeking out, not doing a little bit of damage, but not getting a kill ultimately. Looks like actually a lot of damage. Sova is on one HP. Let's see what's going to happen here. All the defenders are super lit here, but Domo manages to get a kill with the shorty here. That's absolutely incredible here. Now, he does have his ultimate, but I do not believe it's worth it for him to try to use it here. He's going to be able to pick up this gun. Is he going to be leaving? Let's see what's going to happen. Spooky heard the gun pick up. And, uh, oh, Domo! He gets the kill! Oh, my God! I was not expecting that to happen. Cars is able to clean it up here. Just be up to Domo here. And the ace from guards! You love to see it. The the yeah the ace was called upon for him. You you think with an eco round, an ace you know out of context can look like and eh, whatever, but definitely in that situation, absolutely necessary. He clutches it out for his team. You know he had a bit of bit of sketchiness going on with Domo getting that shorty kill and picking up the gun and even taking out another player. I mean that 
That's just a crazy individual play that did happen. The first pick definitely picked up by Vex's ultimate there. I was thinking that was kind of a low value ult, but the way that they got that round so close, I feel like it was definitely worth it in the end. Now we're going into uh, another gun round this game at an even scoreline. Absolutely. See Let's see what's going to happen as, uh, yeah, just like you said, even score line. And also, uh, not to fail to mention, though, the uh, the ultimates here. We've got three ults on Waterloo and four ults on Syracuse. They're going to be able to utilize these uh, pretty effectively. Your Toth going to be picking up extremely spooky here. However, um, you know, we see Vex super, super lit himself. So it is almost an even stack here. Up, uh, Just, uh, you know, that major damage on a raise could be detrimental in the future here as they get up into a into a fight here now the defenders are going to be kind of uh panicking to rotate around here it's looking like they're they're kind of figuring out whether or not they want a three stack a or three stack b but uh we see toef peeking out getting an early pickup on spring there bring this into a 5v3 it's not looking good for syracuse here let's see what's going to happen we see cars going back to pick up the spike and uh yeah the defenders are actually going to be sitting pretty here they uh you know those those early rotates and pushes did actually work out in their favor here. We see Roku peeking out here. He's going to want to pick up Vex and finish off that kill. Uh, Toph is well peeking, but uh, Roku saw the uh, the top of Jet's head, and uh, he was just waiting for that kill there. Uh, this is Crown, though, going to be picking up Juiced, and uh, that's going to be bringing this into a 4v2 here. Roku going to be healing up here, getting ready to flash out. Oh, waiting for that Silva information arrow to dissipate. And uh, let's see if he's going to be flashing out of this Omen Smoke here. He's going to be flashing out. It works out in his favor, but unfortunately, there's too many crosshairs for him to deal with here. So let's see what's going to happen. Cards managed to pick up one more. It's going to be a 1v1 here. Is he going to be able to plant the spike here? Domo, here's the plant happening, but he's not going to be pushing it just yet. Let's see what's going to happen. Cards going to be utilizing all of those jet smokes just to get a little bit of time here to get into a better position. All cards has to do is defend the spike with his life here. Is Domo going to be able to capitalize on this, or is he going to be, uh, you know, wasting this opportunity? Let's see what's going to happen. Cards going to be uh, not phased by that fake defuse. Let's see. Oh my gosh, Domo was able to fake it out here. He killed Cards, and that was absolutely incredible. So Cards, he heard the fake defuse, and he went and he checked the bomb. But he just didn't see Domo, so he's like, oh yeah, he's obviously on the other side of U-Haul. And there we go. That actually worked out in Domo's favor. He pushed up after the fake. That is so unfortunate. The timing just escapes him on that clutch. I was going to say, uh, uh, definitely a missed opportunity that, you know, Waterloo didn't close that out earlier. It was a 5v3. And they kind of gave them the peaks that they needed, and they knew where they were, but they still... Peeked into him and, and the low health H or the low HP did not help on those gunfights, but they picked it up in the end, so I can't be too harsh. Um, but definitely almost a almost a missed opportunity. Definitely a sketchy round from them. They might want to cards clean and and to Roku any are just disasters. such powerful players here. Toth actually picking up cards very very early on, and that is a huge pickup here. So uh, like I was saying, their cards and uh, and Roku are just extremely powerful players for Syracuse. They both have eight kills, which is uh, which puts up at match MVPs. Um, so far, at, you know, seven rounds in, but um, let's see what's going to happen here. Roku going to be actually getting phased out a little bit and uh, unable to pick up that kill on Vex. And uh, one of the things I'd like to point out, the player bio for Vex is that he's blind in one eye, and that makes two of us. Let's see what's going to happen in the spring. Going to be getting taken out by Toph. Going to be now a 5v... Wow, 5v2 now as Toph picks up a triple kill here, taking out cards, spring, and juice. It, but Roku going to be peeking out saying, this is my angle here. And uh, let's see what's going to happen here as we go into the 2v4. Now, Roku, if there's anyone that's going to be able to, to win this situation, it is Roku. So let's see what he's going to be able to do. He's going to be ulting here. We've seen so many ults come out of him. There's only been eight rounds. I have no idea how he's getting all these ult points here. And now that is going to be giving him some massive information here. He's clearing all the angles at once here, which, give, which uh, you know, by process of elimination, he now knows where the entire team is. But Vex going to be rotating from the back. And Roku gets taken out by this is Crown's ult, but Spooky going to be able to take out Vex here. Let's see what's going to happen. Just give up to Spooky here. He has the spike. He's going to be trying to plant. But uh, he takes out Domo. What a flick! Let's see what's gonna happen. He is going to be getting He is gonna be getting revealed by that information arrow, and let's see what's gonna happen. Domo is gonna be right there as Spooky gets peeked out by Sova behind him. And uh this is not gonna be good here. Crown gonna be firing through the crates, and he does get the kill here. Bringing another round for Waterloo. Great work from Domo there to bait out the shots towards heaven. Um Definitely baiting the crosshair up there, and then all you had to do was work his way around behind him. He was walking, no sound, no reason that he should uh, expect it, and that's going to close out that round. Another round for the defenders, and another round for Waterloo here. Um, 
definitely pointing out Toph in this round. I mean, there's not even too much to analyze about his play. He just he just walked down mid and killed three. He walked down mid, took a pick, and he kept winning his gunfights. And that's something that you definitely need on your jet. Somebody who's just not willing to give up angles and not willing to, you know, lose gunfights right now. He's hot. He's definitely hot. Absolutely. And you were, you're talking about Roku's alt usage so far. He has had three alts so far in eight rounds. That's insane. That is absolutely incredible. And, uh, yeah, you just love that energy here. We are going to be seeing Zirkus here with four ults now. And it uh, looks like they are going to be forced into a slight eco round as, uh, you know, Waterloo, they picked up two wins in a row. They're going to be having a, uh, a massive economy benefit over Syracuse and let's see what's going to happen Bex should be trying to clear it out in bathrooms here looks like Syracuse has said hey A is our best site we are going to be doing whatever we can to hold this but uh Waterloo they know that as well so they're going to be stacking more people on A site here and let's see what is going to happen Ju's going to be doing everything in his power here with uh you know the jet behind him just to make sure that they don't get pushed out and uh you know flanked from behind through this bathroom angle and let's see what Juice is going to do Looks like he's not going to do anything. Is Vex just going to be holding this angle here? Vex knows that they could be waiting for him. And, uh, you know, he's not trying to get in and, uh, and uh, you know, waste any any single bit of hold that he has over the site here. So let's see what is going to happen. Waiting now. We see a uh, very slow round here. But cards, wait, what just happened? Cards just picked up a kill here. Uh, under this is crown with his ultimate from a main that was a massive pick but it looks like they are going to be pushing b instead here we see the killjoy ult go out and uh that's going to be pushing the attackers all the way back off of the site here that was something that i definitely did not expect it looks like the attackers they just rotated out to b re-rotated back to a but vex is going to be waiting for it like we said earlier vex decided not to go for it donald picking up a double kill here extremely spooky going to be trading him out let's see who's going to have a vex oh my god that was an insane play there jumping around and uh spring going to be able to pick up a kill here however he just did not have time to play the bomb and uh that 1v3 situation he's only able to pick up one Domo getting the kill. Oh, and he, he gets picked oh, up no. after time. Unfortunate round there. They see the killjoy out go off towards that B, prompting it, a rotation. But Vex hears it all, and he's able to play patiently. I think a worse player, a less patient player, would have just swung out and tried to take out as many players in that A hall as he could. But instead, he took the one pick. He dropped back to U halls, dropped the satchel off, got extra damage, took another pick. He really played around... The fact that they had limited time, limited time, and he needed to herd them in a certain direction. That was a great play from Vex. Absolutely. And uh, looking forward now, we are going to be seeing a lot of the ults that were used in the last round. Uh, going to be, you know, since they're missing from this round, it kind of limits the opportunities that uh, Syracuse has to push this, especially since they've been losing so many rounds in a row. They really do need to utilize these ults carefully. And, uh, you know, Spooky definitely has uh, an advantage here if he can utilize his information arrow at the same time as his ult here and uh, get some free kills onto Waterloo. That would help them push the site immensely. And uh, let's see what they're going to be able to do. It looks like Syracuse is going to be stacking four people on the B site. As we see Cypher as well, just kind of waiting in A, waiting to find out where Toph is and getting that pickup here. Roku going to be leading the push up here, but Damo and Domo going to be picking up a kill. Damo actually picking up a double kill there. Now only down to the Silva and the Cypher here. That is so unfortunate for Syracuse here. Waterloo just holds the site so well here. Damo with a th uh, triple kill here. Juice not able to capitalize on any sort of, uh, you know, distraction here as Damo picks up a 4K. What just played out in that round was exactly what you outlined it at the very first round of the entire game is that Killjoy utility placed underneath Hookah makes it virtually impossible for the entry to come out of Hookah because as soon as you jump down you're in that grenade and that's what screwed him there I mean the I mean Roku their best fragger their their best entry so far I mean I guess he is tied with cards but it's their best entry specifically so far coming out on the site getting full blind getting full naded he had no chance to pick up anything there and it screwed him th from there Dama with a great 4k on that hold and uh, they really seemed to want to go be there without even clearing out most of the utility before they got there. And they ran straight into a stack. It was a really unfortunate play from Syracuse, but they need to come up with something different. Absolutely. There's two rounds left in this half here. And so I believe that Syracuse is going to be doing uh, whatever they can. Oh, wait. Are we in a pause? It looks like we are in a pause right now. 
Yeah, so uh, not sure what the pause is for. Probably a, uh, a little bathroom break here. But let's see what they're, they're going to be able to pull off. It looks like uh, Syracuse is actually taking some time with this pause to tactically assess their economy and figure out if they need to save. There are, like I said, there's two rounds left here. And whatever they go into with the next round here, the last round of the half, that is definitely going to... Uh, you know, do a lot for for the team here. And uh, so it looks like they are going to be saving just a little bit, making sure that the team has at the very least uh, $1,500, $1,200. They're on a four loss streak, so they get the maximum loss benefit here. Let's see what's going to happen. Toaf going to be doing some work with this op here, especially as Syracuse is debating to push his angle here. Nice information with that raised boom bot here. So cards and spraying going to be uh, hard pressed to uh, push this angle here, especially as Sova actually gets that reveal information arrow off. And uh, yeah, cards just could not take it out in time. That did end up revealing him. Juice could be leading out here. And now one of the things that I wish that we had that we were seeing is Juice utilizing his uh, Cypher Cam. Tof actually going to be getting triple peaked here and missing the shot, uh, which not really much that you could do there in that situation. But Vex going to be doing what he can to hold that secondary angle. Ooh, we're finally seeing that an Omen teleport here for information. Great job by Waterloo here. Tove actually going to be taking out Spring here. Starting off the round, let's see what's going to happen. He's going to be seeing Juice there in bathrooms. And uh, let's see Tove pulling up with the op again. Uh, possibly going to be uh, rotating back around, taking the long way into heaven. And let's see what's going to happen. Syracuse gets ready to go all the way out around back to B site. And uh, four stack up on this. But yeah, that Killjoy utility is just so powerful. And, uh, yeah, like I was left. saying earlier, though, that juiced information, uh, or I'm sorry, that Cypher utility here uh, can really help out, but Juice just not utilizing Cypher to his fullest potential on uh, the attacking side thing. Card picking up a double kill there on the B site. That was intense. Let's see what's going to happen here as Damo gets ready to hold up here. Cards sprinting right out there, dashing out, manages to take him out as Domo picks up Juice, and uh, he gets the spike down. Let's see if uh, we're going to be seeing Cards get another ace here. Let's see, extremely spooky gonna be doing what he can with the ultimate. Unfortunately, he's not gonna quite connect there. Cards picking up a 4k here. Spooky gets taken out by Vex. Is Cards gonna be getting an ace? We will find out here as Vex gets ready to ult out. He is gonna be able to take out Cards. They're canceling that ult. Let's see what Vex is gonna be able to do here. He's gonna be having his grenade out, but unfortunately, not gonna find him as Roku sits from inside a box, takes out Vex, and he's gonna be able to bring an op in the last round of the half. Last round before the half. Vex guessing wrong on that last positioning, and that cost his team the round, unfortunately. Cards, I mean, an incredible round from him. You see that A contact strat attempting to be played out there, but just great defending, great teamwork from Vex and Toph to shut that one down. They run B, and they just say, you know what, cards go kill, and he taps down four people. An incredible individual performance so far from Cards, winning individually winning his team rounds, but, you know, the defense there definitely... I wanted to talk about them more specifically, uh, just the, the baiting and and uh, positioning of that ace site between Toph and, and Vex. Oh, Toph getting a very early pickoff through oh. bathrooms there. Looks like, so what What uh, Waterloo has been doing is they have been very strategically deciding what rounds they want to push into bathrooms and what rounds they don't. And it looks like that round they got a trade in through bathrooms here. Juice picking up a kill uh, and uh, Vax picking up a kill as well. Spooky going to be doing what he can, utilizing his Sofa informa information arrows and his shock arrow and his drone all at once here for that massive... Uh, that massive just utilization of utility through mid here. And it looks like Vex is able to pick up Juice. And then he baits out cards. Unfortunately, cards with not only an op, but also his knives. He is going to be able to take out Vex here. Let's see what's going to happen. Spring gets massively damaged by that uh, shock arrow. And uh, he's going to be blinding out. But unfortunately, it does not quite connect before Damo can pick him up here. So Spooky going to be getting taken out as well. Just going to be up to cards here. The 1v3 situation here. Waterloo not letting anything happen this round here. They want to finish off this half with as strong of a pickup as they can. And they are going to be able to finishes half eight and four Switching no chance sides. for the clutch there 30 hp left it was definitely a lockout there and we are gonna see the sides switch here after that first half we do have eight to four and that is not necessarily a horrible thing you just have to see a much stronger defense coming through and i think without the killjoy that may be a tougher task than you think the cypher definitely or killjoy definitely in my opinion, better than Cypher on this map. So we will see how they use the Cypher information. You were you were right though. Not not much Cypher information being used at all on the on the attacking side. Yeah, so and that's definitely interested to see how he's going to use that. That's one of the that. things that I was really surprised to see because they had so many uh, times, especially because Juice was really uh, you know he was 
very much an A player, and he was playing through bathrooms a lot, but he never utilized his camera on the attacking side to peak the angles for him, and I think that really went to their detriment. So let's see what's going to happen now as uh, we see Syracuse on the defense side of things, and uh, let's see what Waterloo is going to be able to do on the attacking side. Roku going to be sitting up here in mid, going to be seeing Vex. Vex missing the first shot here, but Roku not. He's backing off a little bit, not challenging it too, too hard here. Looks like they at opposite uh, timings there. Let's see what Tove is going to be able to do as he pushes out. And uh, nice utilization of teamwork there. And uh, finally, some good Cypher traps there. And uh, looks like Roku going to be picking up a double kill there as he's holding out. He's going to be having to back off and heal for a little bit here. Spooky picking up Damo. Going to be bringing this into a 4v2. Let's see what they're going to be able to do here in this pistol round as this is crowned. Gets ready to push back out. Is he going to be able to walk across these two defenders with the ghost? No. Car is going to be holding, his, holding that angle extremely well here. Reducing both the Sova and the Killjoy to uh, low health here. And uh, like I said, this is going to be the pistol round. So that is detrimental uh, to all of them here. And it's it, this 2v4 situation is going to be very, very hard pressed for Waterloo to actually pick this up. Let's see what's going to happen. This is Crown pushing around. This is spooky. Or I'm sorry, extremely spooky. Take it out. This is Crown here with a nice one tap here. Just to be able to Domo here. Domo, he sees three people on the other side. With just a classic, he's not going to be able to do very much of this, especially as he gets pushed by cards and revealed at the same time. Absolutely unfortunate there for uh, Waterloo. But nice pickup by Syracuse. What seemed like a good amount of entry uh, pressure and getting definitely the frag onto Juice T immediately seemed like it was going to be a good side take, but they didn't really have the utility or the map control to keep uh, Syracuse from re-pushing the site immediately, and that's what they did. Spooky with great kills, and then they never really got to clear Roku out of uh, out of hookah up here, and he ended up tapping down too, which was definitely a crucial play from him, staying alive that whole time, not over pushing, not we getting killed. We are seeing the entirety so of Syracuse him. picking up ghosts and armor here, and we see three players of Waterloo picking up shorties. What are we going to be seeing in this round? What is this? What is going to happen here? We see Waterloo getting ready to stack up. Water is going to be uh, pushing through Hookah, getting that Hookah control here with shorties. Uh, I'm super excited to see this here. It looks like we, we're seeing Roku holding out on B long. And, uh, well, Waterloo does not want to push that angle at all here. We see Spooky getting ready to hold this with a ghost here. And uh, looks like he's going to be getting some info, but no pickups here. Tove taking out Juice and Domo taking out Spooky. Bring this into a 5v3, now a 4v3 here as Roku picks up one. Domo going to be able to clear it out, though. Bring this into a 2v4 situation here. And looks like Waterloo ba getting back on the board here. They now have the two-man advantage that they, were at a, that they lost the first round. And let's see what Tove is going to be able to do. He's pushing in. He hears the shots on his right. He takes out Spring with one shot. And he sees Cards now. Cards takes out. This is Crown here. Tove dashing out. Unfortunately, not able to do anything more than a little bit of damage here. His Cards picks up a 2K. Let's see Cards. He's going to be pushing back through. He is going to be dealing with uh, this nice crossfire here that Waterloo has set up. Now, they Domo. He just did not wait a second there. As soon as he saw Cards, he took him out with that one top. And there we go. We are now seeing Waterloo bring this into a 9-5, to five, just like the job that I don't want. It looks like they, uh, looks like we just watched a second pistol round. I mean, similar strategy, but this time they, they corrected their mistakes of last time and really relying on their aggression, uh, forward aggression is much more befitting to their team comp rather than uh, a slow play contact trying to lock the players on the site. Instead, they just push extremely hard, take the close angles immediately, and it, and it works out for them. But now we're going to see a full gun round. The, the ecos from both teams were just, was definitely interesting, but it's helpful. That oh, Tove with a very early pick up here on the cards through. here. Bring this into a 5v4 already as the round just barely starts. Let's see what they're going to be able to do. Domo going to be leading this push through into A site here. Now, that's a massive pickup for Waterloo as they now have a one-man advantage just starting off the round, pushing into site, especially because they they picked off cards. That's their, that is Syracuse's top player. So uh, it's gonna Syracuse is actually going to be hard-pressed to do anything this round here. They are really going to have to uh, do some work here. Spring getting revealed and uh, wall banged here. Uh, quite unfortunate there. Tove could be finishing off there. Nice crossfire set up by Waterloo on that attack here. Let's see what's going to happen here. Extremely spooky. Backed into a corner here, but everybody's waiting for him. The spike goes down already. Waterloo not losing a single player in that first firefight. And uh, looks like Syracuse is working on figuring out whether or not they want to save or if they want to push this. 
They have a two-man disadvantage here. Spooky going to be getting pushed up from the back by Vex. Vex lining up that one tap, missing the first one, but he is able to clean it up in the end here. Juiced waiting on the left here to tap him out. And unfortunately, he's, that waiting did not work out here. Vex is able to capitalize on uh, the, the fact that he knew that the whole team was waiting there and had not pushed out yet and uh, was able to get the pickup here. It's just going to be Roku now, who is definitely not pushing. He's, he's going to be trying to save this here, but it looks like the entirety of Waterloo is going to be pushing him here onto the site. But Roku is going to be... Oh, he's going to get taken out! He didn't even get one kill here. Toe for the 3K. A flawless round from Waterloo. They did not want to let him save, and that is definitely super important with all the guns coming out. They're going to force him onto a pretty harsh eco, I imagine. And looking at the money right now, it's definitely going to be the case. Great job from Toph there, grabbing the entries. Good information, I think, off the back of Crown there. He may be bottom on the scoreboard, but his information there definitely got them into that ace site. So, great job from him playing his role. All around, Waterloo looking fantastic on the attack. Absolutely, and check this out. We got cards 17 and 12 here. Now, uh, he is really just Syracuse's top player, and uh, he is showing off what he can Get do, especially with way. that jet. I love seeing jets just do this absolutely insane performance here uh just using that utility just to to throw off the enemy team here you know what sight lines you're supposed to look at and as jet you know you just dash right through it and pop up on the other side of the site so roku gonna be holding this angle with a judge here and that is absolutely uh uh, that's gonna hurt Vex. Oh, but he pushes out here, but and Vex, he was waiting for that. Cards is actually able to pick up Domo though, but Vex picks up a 2k here in mid and Huka. That's insane here. We see the 4v2 now, and uh, this is looking like an absolute repeat of what happened just a few short rounds ago. We see Extremely Spooky gonna be uh, pushed back and not getting an inch in pushing into uh, CT here, and uh, he's just gonna be stuck here in spawn with Omen. Holding just a classic. I don't even know what if he's just going to be waiting to try to pick up a kill and take their gun. I think that Syracuse is really hurting for economy here. So they just want to uh, they just want to do whatever they can to pick it up and not lose anything. Toph though picks up spring and there goes a thousand dollars of armor and eight hundred dollars sheriff. That's so unfortunate. Let's see Toph gonna be pushing here with a vandal. I love the skin here. He is gonna be able to get taken out by Spooky. Is Spooky gonna be able to take the gun and run? He takes the gun, but is he gonna make it out in time? What is gonna happen? Looks like he is. He did make it out just in time here. And we are now gonna be seeing uh, him getting pushed by Vex, but Vex does not make it around the corner in time here. Wow. That's, that's a bit of a victory for them, if uh, if nothing else to take away from that round. I mean, a complete whitewash domination towards that B site, but of course it is an eco round, so there's a lot to take care of. One thing I do want to point out is that, something I've said multiple times, is that I'm actually incredibly imp impressed round by round by Vex's patience. You see him on the, on the raise, you'd expect maybe a lot more aggression, but I think the patience has been something super important for him. He's confident in his gun skill, and he's been... Hitting his shots super consistently, waiting for... Even that judge push that round was pretty impressive. Absolutely. Let's see what Toph is going to be able to do here as he holds up. Cards pushes up and takes out Toph. Cards wins those gunfights here. Insane. Let's see what's going to happen here. We are going to be seeing the 4v5 here. Roku. Wow, this is such a deep push here. Not only just Roku, but it is going to be a two... It's going to be two people on the defensive side of things. But there you go. That is the whole point that I love Killjoy here. She is extremely useful on defense, but also on attack, just preventing those rotations. And now the attacking team knows that there's at least one member of the defense that is not holding the site that they should be. So they are going to be doing whatever they can. And uh, let's see what is going to happen. Roku going to be just sitting here with Spooky as they hold up the site here. Damo and Domo, the dynamic duo, getting ready to push up on the side here. But Vex takes out Spooky. There's that rotate that all goes down here. But Roku is going to be able to take out Damo here. He's not going to be able to pick up another one. Domo avenging his brother. Left. And we see the 3v3 happen now. As uh, looks like Syracuse is going to be rotating back out to get onto B site here. As Waterloo pushes out what that Cypher utility doing some work here. Domo taking out cards though. Vex. Not able to ult out onto Juice, though. Domo is able to clean it up, though. Let's see what's going to happen. This is Crown going to be using his drone here to find out that uh, there's Spring. It, Crown versus Spring, and Crown going to be coming out on top here. And we are going to be seeing Waterloo get into match point. Match point. It's super... 
I mean, something I want to point out, but they got the jump done anyways. That I th I thought the push came through a little slow after after you know you get that information of the push, and Vex does a fantastic job of clearing out Sova and you clear out Roku in that connector. And, but they they decided to even walk towards site, which allowed the defenders to get onto the site and at least contest, making it a little dicier than it, it, it even should have been. But great job from Waterloo to pick it up. And I can't be super nitpicky. It is 12 to 5. I think this this might end this round. This has been such a momentum shifter Absolutely. on this defense. Or on and this attack. even though it is 12 to 5, we still see Cards as the match MVP here, even though he is going to be on the losing side of things. And that just really shows how powerful of a player he is. Let's see what's going to happen. Tove get, getting ready to frag out here. He wall bangs it, but nobody's going to be sitting there. We do see Syracuse's Cypher doing some work here. Uh, but unfortunately... They're not going to be able to capitalize. Vex is using those flight mechanics here. Tove takes out Juice as well. Let's see what's going to happen. It is going to be down to a 4v4 here. Tove at 10 HP. He is going to be able to get... Oh, he doesn't get the kill. Davo takes out Roku. As Spooky takes out Tove, who is ulting. Let's see what's going to happen here. We see the, uh, the Sova ult go off. It is going to be a 3v3 now. A 3v2 here. Spooky. A 3v1 here. Cards. Do Damo picking up a, a 3k. Oh my god, what is happening? It's just going to be down to the 1v1. Is Syracuse going to be able to pick it up? It's going to be Damo versus Spring. Damo picks up the spike. He's going to be teleporting out on the A side here. Spring going to have to run back. Let's see what they're going to be able to do here. Damo going to be getting the plant out here. Spring. He's going to be pushing out from CT here. Not going into heaven. Damo faking the teleport out. Let's see. It looks like Damo and Spring. But Spring, he is able to kill him. And we are going to be seeing Syracuse bring at least one more round. I wanted to see that work out so badly. Playing so many different mind games with him. I thought that this was def this could have definitely been a round win. So very, very close. Damo working so hard to try and pull back that 3v1. Great defense coming out from Syracuse. The, the hyper-aggression we've seen, that, that's the third time we've seen that hyper-aggression towards the B side, and that time they finally were able to deal with it. Great job from Cards hitting his shots once again. You can always count on him to do that, apparently. And uh, great job from the defense on Syracuse here. They, they showing, they're showing a little bit of life in this game left. They don't want to lose, you know, 13-5. That's not a, not a great scoreline for what looked like to be a very even matchup. So let's see how this one ends up shaking up in the very end. Absolutely. Let's see what they're going to be able to do here. Looks like Waterloo is actually sweating a little bit now. They saw that Syracuse, they pulled it off after it was just, it looked like it was all over. But, uh, you know, Syracuse, that was such a great clutch up by Spring here. And now Syracuse is going to be having two ults in their pocket here. Roku holding this angle. He takes out Vex with a headshot here. So casual about it as well. Let's see. He hears the peek out by Domo. He is going to be uh, waiting for it to happen as he trades out his judge for the Vandal here, holding out in Hookah. And let's see what Domo is going to be able to do. Is he going to be able to get the pick up on Spooky? No, he's not. He takes out Spooky's armor a little bit. And uh, that is going to push him back. But Syracuse, they have found their... Uh... Oh, Tove takes out Roku. That's a powerful pick up here. Now into a 4v4. Let's see what's going to happen. Juice holding this angle here with his life here. Tove as well pushes out a little bit too deep. And Cards, he takes out Tove. He capitalized on that. And Cards, oh, Cards gets taken out by Domo. It's now down to a 3v3 here. Now 3v2 is Spring picks out Domo. That is insane here. We see Waterloo sitting at a one-man disadvantage here. And left. is are we going to be seeing a repeat of the last round? Syracuse, they found their energy. They found out what they need to do here. They learned what Waterloo's style is at just the right time. And are they going to be picking up some more rounds here? Waterloo going to be rotating out to get the bomb planted on A-site. And uh, let's see if it's going to work out here. Domo is going to be having to deal with the Sofa information arrow. It's about to left. reveal him. And let's see if he gets a spike down time. He does get the spike down. This could be it. All they have to do is defend this. But if they can't, it is going to be all over. There we go. We do see Killjoy playing with the uh, utility there. Those grenades are going to do a lot of work to stop the pushes out. Spooky gets ready to peek out. We see all three defenders stacking out. Domo picks up one, but Spring takes him out here. Just give up to this is crown. If this is crown, can clutch us up. He's not going to be able to, though. Juice going to be making sure that they go 12 and 7. Great retake from Syracuse there, playing for the trades. They did that perfectly. And that's uh, that's how 3v2 should go. You know, great job from them. I think they, what they have found out, like you said, is they've figured out what Waterloo's style is. I think it's they've kind of put their own style into the defense here, and that is taking the map control. Um, Waterloo has been very heavy into these um, full force one site pushes, and I think that it's been smart from Syracuse to take the map control that Waterloo is forfeiting by going for these heavy pushes. And that's what worked last round.
and it's going to work, and it, and it could work throughout the rest of this game, but I don't think they're going to opt for this this time with cards going on the AWP, or the, uh, the operator. Not an AWP. AWP, it is just an OP. <laughs> like, uh, you know, Artie's OP. Just an OP. Let's see what's going to happen here. I'm so excited to see what cards is going to be able to do with this, and uh, I think that Syracuse, they're going to be going all out here, but oh no! That's so, that's so unfortunate. I'm eating my words here. Caster's Curse. Is Spring going to be able to pick up Domo? No, Domo starts around off with a double kill here. Not even 15 seconds into it. That is insane. We are seeing now a 3v5 here. Waterloo, they want this game to end here. They want this to just be over. Do Tof taking out Juice here. Domo was going to be going for the ace here. But Tof said, no, let me have one. Tof picking up a double kill as well. As it's just going to be all up to Roku. Roku is a massive fragger. But is he a, is he a good enough fragger to 1v5 for the clutch here? He gets revealed by the alarm button. That's going to send Waterloo all rushing into his area here. Roku going to be uh, stopped out by that utility here. And he gets peeked out by Tof. And that's the end of the round here. Waterloo, 13 and 7. That is going to be the last round. They've they've sought out the uh, counter map control coming out from Syracuse, and they did not, or they did not get the counter map control that time. Great job from Waterloo to not allow that to happen, and that is going to end the game 13 to seven. That was a very interesting game, despite the scoreline not being as close as as a highly contested game was. It definitely a lot to uh, unpack absolutely. There. We saw we saw three people dropping 20 bombs today and uh man i just really want to highlight cards you know like even though he was on syracuse he didn't end up getting the dub uh he just did some work there for the team and that was absolutely insane and uh yeah waterloo though they just really have that teamwork down pat and you just gotta gotta applaud them for that because that is something that is extremely hard to come by and having that just massive dynamic where you could just completely rely on your team to be able to frag out and uh, you know just do what they need to with their utility. Uh, Waterloo really did deserve this W today. I think before we bring back in Kanashi, I want to highlight one other thing: is that usually a lot of a lot of uh, score lines like this come come down to which team is hot today. But I think Roku and Cards showed that despite. Syracuse being hot, I mean, Damo and Tof on the other team definitely came out with that same kind of energy. So it kind of just came down to teamwork and, and how they use the utility, how they use the killjoy. So uh, great job from both teams. Fun game to, to watch, and uh, I'm interested to see what Kanashi has to say about this one. Kanashi, what do you have to say about that game? How did you feel watching it? My bad, forgot the mic. I had to uh, <laughs> turn this thing on again. Um, I, I'm usually over here scribbling notes, and I don't want to take people out of their element. So, honestly, this match was really, like, even-paced when it started out. Um, by the time that we hit the eighth round, it or by the time that we hit round seven, it was already 3-3. So, honestly, it was really, really close for the most part. There's a couple of things that I do want to point out on round two. Um, Toph decided to run a judge and got a couple picks there, but round three was really important um, for for Syracuse. That was the first time that they actually had guns in their hands, um, and they won that round. So it shows that like the second that they actually get weapons, they were willing to get evenly matched there. Um, there was really good rotations on round seven, um, and Domo had that fake and caught the timing. Um, on cards which won them that round um round five had a really good play by syracuse where they decided to stay as three because they knew that with four players down they were going to be two and two on each site so they took it as if it's a 3v2 on one site and waited for the other two to rotate in and ended up getting the trades that they needed for that um by the time that we got to um the half there was a couple of things that i wanted to point out it felt like um Syracuse's momentum kind of slowed down um, once a half happened. It was 4-8. Um, they win the first round. They win the pistol round. But they couldn't find their footing after that. Uh, it was more like their economy couldn't keep up. Um, and I felt like that was due to the buys. Um, on round 13, teams usually tend to buy up a little bit. Um, so when it came to round 14, uh, we saw Waterloo run that two shorties with the entry fraggers thing um that shouldn't have worked in in theory right like you're not supposed to win with shorties when you're on attack but 
because of the fact that um, Syracuse didn't buy up and didn't take advantage of their um, their economic stance at that point, um, they ended up losing that range battle if they don't land their shots with their ghosts. So um, I felt like that was really the one thing that caught Syracuse off guard. Uh, Waterloo really took that to heart and really made them punish, uh, really punished them. Round 18 and 19 was really good on Syracuse's part, just finding good trades and playing that out as well as they could. But Domo at the very end, picking off two on A, was just able to clean up and, you know, close out the game for them. Honestly, a really good matchup between these two. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing them go head-to-head -head again. Like, there was moments, you know, Cards has the most kills and was the most proactive. But honestly, these two teams were neck and neck for the most part. Um, can't wait to see what else they can bring to the table. Um, and if we do get to see them later down the line. I do hope that we get to see them later down the line because just like you said, they just they had such a great flow together. And I'm just so happy that we got to see that today. Great about it, about him so far. And that. Uh... That's a great job. Yeah, it's just a really good match, but that's going to wrap it up for the East Central Division for today. Um, after this short break, we'll be moving to the Central Mountain West Division as Ryerson University is going to be taking on Simon Excited Fraser. to see it. Thousand rocket league credits. We got gotcha Peter for the winner of it. Hey. Hey. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <There we> go. <laughs> um, Esports College and Career Pathways. Um, we are dedicated to helping gamers, uh, players really improve their game, whether at the collegiate level like we are today or as a career. <laughs> go to your buddy be like, hey. I got paid to play video game and get good grades. What did you get money for? It? We really want to give a foundation for gamers to come in, express themselves in their own way, give them a competitive base setting, and provide them with the equipment necessarily necessary to you know thrive in that competitive setting. We looked at the resources that we are available and even yesterday I was talking to parents and players and they didn't even know there are varsity teams at the college level, let alone that there's scholarships. So we took upon ourselves that we really want to put together these combines, um, not just like Rock League we're doing now, but we're doing League of Legends in two weeks and beyond that we're probably going to do Fortnite to really give resources and a recruitment tool for the colleges, but really to get these players in front of the right people at the right time.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the Golden Coast Invitational brought to you by Esports College and Career Pathways. My name is Kanashi and I will be your host for this event. Um, we still have some great Collegiate Valorant action for you guys coming up. Once again, this is our fourth week of our nine week event um, that will showcase all of the Collegiate scene um, that we have here in North America. Um, once again, we are sponsored by Esports College and Career Pathways, uh, which supports Collegiate Esports communities. Um, this Invitational is one of the examples of how they help out. They're helping out with the prize pool. Um, they are also they also help sponsor Hive, which helps support women's colleges uh, across the U.S. But for more information, please follow them at their social media or on their website at esportsccp.gg. Uh, once again, we will be finishing out today with our second game of the program. Uh, we just finished the East Central Division match between Syracuse University, Orange, and the University of Waterloo Gold. Waterloo. Uh, now we move on into the Central Mountain Division, or Central Mountain West Division, as Ryerson University Gold will be taking on Simon Fraser University Esports. Uh, the first few weeks of this tournament, once again, are going to be played in a best of one format uh, in a round robin. So every single round counts um, as it will count towards the way how playoffs are scored as we move on into November. Um, these schools aren't just playing for bragging rights, by the way. They are here for the competition. Um, first place will be going home with $1,000 and the title of Golden Coast Invitational Champions. Um Second place will be going home with $500, and third place will be going home with $250. Uh, we have another great matchup for you guys, as we are going to be heading into the match between Ryerson University as a face-off against Simon Fraser University Esports. Ryerson University will be rolling with Christian, Hunra, Nate Yu, Dankster, and Pikachu. This team is stacked with Immortals and are looking to take home the gold. As for their challengers, SFU Esports... Uh, their starting lineup consists of Water Jobby, Ooga Booga, Yasa, Tubular, and Link. This team has a wide range of players from Immortal to Radiant, so this is going to be a very evenly contested match, um, with the exception of the one Radiant. Um, the Central Mountain Division will be showcasing a lot of their talents for this match, and once again, to break it down for us, we have Arties and Brody. Um, go ahead, take it away, guys. Ryerson and Fraser uh, watched the previous match so that they can get an idea of what they're going to be dealing with here on Bind today. And uh, I'm just extremely excited to see what these teams have in store for us. Brody? We're back on Bind again for the... Uh, I mean, you know, they, they saw that we hadn't casted yet, so they're like, all right, we need to, we need to give them a back-to-back -back Bind game. So we already know what to expect. We're going to jump into it with these two very evenly matched teams looking at this... Um, Looking at our, our beautiful document in front of us, we have one Radiant player in Yasa, and I'm excited to see what he brings as the only Radiant. But, I mean, when you have something this close, when you have Immortal 3s, Immortal 2s across the board, nothing lower, you can't expect a much more evenly contested scoreboard, even though there is the one Radiant player within the teams. Absolutely. And uh, one of the things that... Uh, let's just uh, go ahead while we got... It looks like we have a little bit of time here while we wait for the stream to catch up. And I uh, just want to talk about some of the, the player bios here, especially for Ryerson. Uh, we know that uh, Pikachu uh, going to be playing for their dogs, two big doggos named Shadow and Kira. And uh, what about uh, Fraser, Simon Fraser? What are they going to be playing for if we're looking at their player bios, Brody? Got a competitive soccer player. That's a little bit of a competitive edge there from, from, uh, from Water Jobby. I mean, yeah, it's a little different, but you know, uh, fundamentally. They are two... <laughs> Almost, Teamwork. Uh, you know, similar, but a little bit different um, when it comes down to A little to different. It. Um, but, yeah, traveled multiple countries to play soccer competitively. That's pretty cool. Uh, Uga Booga, you know, this this man is shrouded in mystery here. His bio is just <laughs> question marks. His name is Uga Booga. And uh, you know what? He, he yeah. terrifies me. He absolutely terrifies <laughs> this me. This man. I Yasa can't lie. as well. He is the sole Radiant player in this game. Uh, but he hates Valorant. Could you imagine being so good at the game and that you hate just to spite it? I, I can believe it. You know, most of the games that I'm good at, I hate. Just, just you know, kind of like a love-hate kind of thing. I imagine that's what Yas is experiencing. You, you don't get to Global Elite and CSGO without utterly despising CSGO. 
Correct. Absolutely. Uh, other than that, I think I I really hope I'm not wrong by saying this, but I believe both these universities are Canadian based or are in Canada, not just Canadian based, but they're in Canada. So time to see what the uh, friends up north bring to this collegiate Valorant tournament. We've seen, I think, one other Canadian team play so far. Uh, I yeah, I, I might believe be that wrong. we had one Canadian team either uh, on the stream either last week or the week before. Um, but I'm I'm very excited to get some uh, Canuck representation up in this. So let's see what they're going to be able to do. It looks like we're going to be seeing SFU starting off here on the attacking side of things. And, uh, well, judging by Tubular's uh, little player icon, he is going to be uh, – it looks like he is a Viper main. I'm hoping we see There's no way. There's no way we if see we a see Viper. If we see a Viper, I will eat a banana <laughs> mid-cast. This is, <laughs> this is my promise to you. You're a bold man. A braver man than I. <laughs> But, I mean, a lot of the uh, a lot of the character matchups we talked about earlier apply the same. Let's see who who picks Killjoy, who picks the Cyphers. I think that if they watch the last um, match, they're gonna be they're gonna be a little bit more upfront about their Sentinel placement and their uh, and their Sentinel utilization here. Especially seeing the uh, the Cipher not really doing anything on the attacking side last game. Um, seeing the Killjoy mm -hmm. just putting in the work. For sure, for sure. And the Sentinel usage last game was definitely one of the biggest uh, differences in in the two teams. So let's see what the choices are, hopefully, and uh, how they decide to use them is definitely something I will be paying a close eye for. Close attention <laughs> close to. <eye. laughs> I don't know why I phrased it like I don't know why I phrased it like that, but you you get you get you caught my drift. Totally you know, you know what I mean. It looks like we are going to be getting ready to start this game off very soon here. And uh, let's see what is uh, let's see what the teams have in stock as we get ready uh, as us casters get ready to look at this white screen here for the next uh, <laughs> you know next forty five minutes or so until <laughs> we just got flash banged. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty much what happens here. And uh, well. Brody, how uh, – so, okay, going from this last game into this game, do you have any expectations? Uh, I think this is – I think even though last game was pretty evenly contested and the ranks were pretty high, I think this should be probably one of the highest levels of competition we have in this tournament. I think both these teams not having a single player below Immortal 2 is kind of is kind of as high as it really gets for, for Collegiate for Honestly, collegiate Valorant. So I'm, I'm definitely really pumped for this one. I am as well. There's – I think this should be yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot that can happen here, especially just seeing these high-level plays. Now, in the last game, we saw a few diamonds, and, uh, and you know, they, they definitely put in their work. I mean, especially just, you know, we saw what cards could do. But uh, imagine if you have five cards, like, on one team. That's what this is going to be, and I'm super excited. I think it's going to be a lot more fast-paced, a lot more hype than the last one. And, uh, well, you know, uh, I think that both teams are going to be absolutely ready to perform here, especially given the fact that they've had a few more hours to wake up. Definitely. I mean, the later game is is, is a lot more helpful. Uh, actually, I mean, the first teams were both East-based, so at least the time zones were grateful to them and uh, definitely not grateful to you as a caster. <laughs> but, but for the teams, I think it's pretty nice. I'm hearing audio, so hopefully we're done being Absolutely. flashbanged. Looks like we are going to be seeing this here, and uh, very similar to last game with uh, you know the Sovas and Omens, very very necessary here. Uh, looks like on uh, the defending side of things, uh, we are no, no kill kill choice, just ciphers. We are going to be seeing two initiators here on the side of uh, uh, the blue team, uh, which is uh, going to be the team of Ryerson. Um, and, uh, yeah, that two initiator set up here with one duelist is going to change things up a bit. But, uh, you know what? It's going to be up to their ciphers, really. Nate Yu, uh, going to be doing whatever he can as a cipher. And, uh, on the opposing team, you got Yasa as cipher. And that really is going to be, uh, you know, those are going to be the key players that we want to watch here. You may have, uh, missed my casting, but I don't know if you missed my train in the background. So here's the one train per stream coming through is the train into hookah for these two these two, uh, <laughs> these two entry I frags, uh, fraggers coming through. I can't I hear anything. I absolutely love the, uh, I love that so much. I can't Let's hear see anything. Gonna happen here. We see Yasa getting ready to push in. Let's see if he's going to be utilizing his utility here. We do have a radiant. Yeah. 
Uh, we do have a Radiant player here, and uh, he's going to be using those Radiant Cypher tactics here. Water Jobby getting ready to push out here. Ooga Booga sending out the first shots there on a B-Long. Uh, going to be backing off there. The 1v2 is never a solid situation, especially when everybody's got ghosts here. Water Jobby here with a Classic getting ready to do some work here. And Hookah, is he going to be pushing out and tra challenging this 1v3 here as the rest of... Uh, SFU gets ready to push out into A site here. Looks like there we go with the uh, the plant going down. Ooga Booga doing some work here. And uh, Dankster taking out Yasa here. There goes the Radiant here. Just going to be up the Link here. Link attempting to uh, utilize his smokes, but he's all out here. Ooga Booga taking out Nate Yu here. And Link with a nice jump oh. on Harmra. <laughs> oh my god. Is he going to be able to do it? He's going to be missing the right click there, but he is able to pop away from it. He's going to be down to a 4v3. Let's see what they're going to be able to do here. Ryerson goes down to just two players here. Ooga Booga Picks up Christian Pikachu taking out Water Joby. Link taking out Pikachu. It's just gonna be a 1v3 here. And Dankster gonna be at 12 HP. This is gonna be hard pressed to do anything here. Ooga Booga picking out, getting the kill here. The 3k by Ooga Booga on the first pistol round. It's already so high. Great job there from the attackers. I believe that is Simon Fraser University, correct? Yeah, yeah, that is Simon Fraser. So Great job from them. Um, getting the bomb down in a 5v5 is always an interesting uh, way of things shaking out on the first round of the game. Um, I think I think the, the gamble was the, the push down long B there didn't net them a pick, and then they kind of got all the information based on that, decided to rotate to A right away. So they didn't get anything on that long B push. They gave away a lot of information, but the, the picks didn't shake out the way they wanted on that 5v5. What a jumping shot from Link. That, that was, that was definitely unexpected. That was a game changer, absolutely. That was insane. SFU is uh, gonna be, uh, you know, they're they're gonna be capitalizing on the fact that they got that first round here, looking at their uh, utility and economy here, and uh, well, Water Joby here with the stinger, but Link gonna be taking out Christian yet again. Some flashbacks here. Breach doing some work. You're missing though on Water Joby. He is still gonna be able to take out Water Joby. Link gonna be uh, picking him up there with the ghost though, and we are gonna be already down to a 4v2 situation. Link picks up a 4K on a Dexter. Oh. Let's see if Link with 4 HP is he gonna be able to get the ace here? What is gonna happen? He's gonna be Pushing in, he is going to be seeing Nate Yu, and uh, he sees him. He misses the headshot, though. Nate Yu with a frenzy, going to be able to pick up Link, canceling that ace there. Ooga Booga going to be doing what he can with the Stinger, though, to hold it back up here. The Stinger versus the frenzy, basically the same gun, in my opinion. Nate Yu utilizing that uh, that Cypher cam, but uh, going to just be baiting out anything here. I love that skin, though. It is the best skin in the game. And uh, unfortunately for Nate Yu, he gets double push here. 13 HP, not going to work out for him. Tubular runs around the corner here. We see uh, SFU. Doing some work here. My gosh, that shot from Link on the for the 4K. I, it was looking a little awkward on that entry so far because that breach swing and you know didn't uh, he couldn't really land the shots onto him. Took him a bunch of body shots to get the kill, but that fourth shot, quick flick onto the headshot on the on the raise there was actually super great. Um, the non-investment really was is definitely what's going to give the guns over. I mean. They're not going to fully invest, so they're going to go for this with these lower guns, which is going to give their economy a boost. If they definitely win this, it'll be a massive, a massive boost to the boost, economy. But we do see Ryerson here with the gun benefit here. Uh, they are going to be fully stacked out with Phantoms and Vandals here. Water Joby still holding on to that stinger. Uh, let's see if he's going to be able to do some work in it, especially as we see Link getting ready to push out here with the Vandal in the hookah. And he is going to be able to take out Hunra. That's unfortunate there. He gets, oh wow, he is able to dash out away from the Breach stun. That was incredible here. Pikachu going to be doing what he can to hold it up here. Yasa getting revealed uh, and uh, hitting the enemy Cypher stun. Water Joby actually utilizing his grenade to take out Pikachu on B side here. Dankster taking out Ooga Booga though, canceling the push here. At least we do have the defense doing some work on A site. But it looks like SFU is going to be pulling out uh, of B site here as they get ready to push on the A. Tubular going to be sending out his uh, information arrow as we see Water Joby uh, you know, blast packing out using those flight mechanics here. Tubular getting the bomb down here. And, uh, well, Ryerson going to be having to rotate here extremely fast to get ready to take on this 3v4 situation here. Nate, you're going to be peeking out, seeing what he can do. Blessing those Cypher utilities here. It's so refreshing to see them finally. Link going to be able to take him out, though, but Christian trades it completely. We are going to be seeing the 2v3 now. Christian utilizing his Shock Dart, doing a little bit of damage, though. He's able to get a double kill. They get out Tubular here, but Dankster taking out Water Joby. Looks like Ryerson actually doing some work here. Yasa, though, the Radiant going to be taking out Dankster here. The 1v1. Let's see what's going to happen. Christian faking the defuse, but Yasa, the oh, headshot. I always play high. The Spectre outclasses both of the rifles there. Great work from Yasa, the resident radiant in this game, to pick up that clutch for his team. I mean, 
the round the round started the same way last round did. You got it seems like um Ryerson's getting caught off guard by these hookah peaks. They're not taking hookah control, which is definitely definitely makes sense. Definitely not the worst idea, but they keep dying from hookah with just on contact, just on contact plays. And I think if they want any say in these rounds, they definitely have to stop that Absolutely. from happening. And just like you were saying before, though, uh, you know, Simon Fraser, they, they saved those guns, and now they have a massive economy benefit over, uh, you know, Ryerson. Ryerson had a massive deficit here, and it looks like they're at a health deficit, too. Water Joby just sending his grenades into Hookah. He gets two of the players at half HP. Pikachu going to be doing what he can to hold it up with a shorty here. Let's see if it's going to work out for him. He gets ready, and uh, he's going to be getting pushed out by Link, but who Who's gonna be faster? Link is gonna be faster. But well, let's see if Link is gonna get caught off guard. He gets stunned. He gets uh, blinded out by the Omen here. By let's see if Link is gonna be wall banging through to Pikachu. It looks like Water Joby is gonna be able to get the uh, peek out on Pikachu. And uh, Christian gonna be taking on Tubular. Let's see what's gonna happen. Link comes right around the corner to take out Christian. SFU is just th so aggressive, and it's so refreshing to see here. Usually, Bind is a slow map like we saw last game, but this is just insane. Let's see what's gonna happen here. The bomb goes down on a B site here, and uh, Ryerson has to rotate it back around. Looks like they're sending Nate U out the back and Dankster out the front. Let's see what they're going to be able to do here. I mean, this round's over. You really just expect a couple exit frags. Hopefully at least one. I mean... Absolutely. Dankster holding the, out The here economy's already the, so uh, strong. The, the stinger here. And Nate U holding it. Nate U's going to save his sheriff. A little bit of ping delay. Sorry for talking over you, my man. Oh, no, but it's up fine. and it's uh, there we go. It happened. Dankster unable to do some work with the stinger there. Ooga Booga getting the headshot there. Unlucky. And uh, yeah, I don't think any exit frags are going to be had here, especially as we see Nate you getting double pushed out here. Is he going to be able to get the headshot? No, he's not. He gets taken out. No oh. saves were had. SFU carrying this momentum forward, not letting Ryerson get an inch. I mean. The eco round, uh, not not fruitful for Ryerson there, but you're seeing at least some sort of counterplay. They went for the hookah control. They may have lost it, but they're definitely trying to adjust, and I think this gun round will tell us a lot, a lot about how the rest of this half is going to shake out. Link 10 and 2, there's one man that is definitely on the radar of Ryerson. They need to stop him from grabbing all these entry Link, frags. just these jets on bind, dude. I don't know what it is, but they are just absolutely performing. Let's see what's going to happen. Water Joby utilizing his utility here. And it looks like Ryerson learned last time that they cannot hold Hookah against Water Joby and Link. So they're going to be backing out, playing B from a little bit more defensively. Let's see what they're going to be able to do here as we see the entirety of, of uh, Ryerson just spread out across the sites here as SFU gets ready to stack into B site. They did a great job there. Link actually almost going down there. Hurrah, actually doing some massive work there. And uh, that was actually really powerful here. Now Link is down to 40 HP and no armor. And uh, that could turn things around. Just like you were saying, it, it, Link is just a performer here. And uh, now that he's going to be at a health deficit, might change things up in favor for Ryerson. Uga Booga going to be dodging. For sure, SFU already with the... Gonna be seeing the ult go off on the A site here. Let's see what they're gonna be able to do here. Link gonna be holding out left. with the uh, the stun, almost getting taken out by those breach charges. Let's see here, Link getting ready. Uh, he knows exactly where breach is. He's gonna be sending his team out. You guys deal with this one. But Water Joby doesn't pay attention to the the, uh, the ping. Pikachu getting a kill here, and uh, looks like. Ryerson is actually doing some great work here Ten as Christian left. picks off Link with the ultimate here. We are going to be seeing Tubular getting the plant down. Let's see what Nate U is going to be able to do as he gets ready to push out here. The spike does go down. SFU still has a chance here, but Ryerson with the two-man advantage. What is going to happen? Uga Booga getting ready. He sees Nate, or he hears up Nate U, but he gives his position away. Looks like, no, he's not expecting Nate U, but Nate U gets flashed. He does end up going down here. Christian takes out Tubular. It's going to be down to a 4v2. Uga Booga getting a triple kill. Oh, oh my god. It's now down to a 1v1 here. Yasa going to be doing what he can against Pikachu, oh my god, that was insane, the three kill stack, Pikachu getting a kill on Yasa here, we do see Ryerson pick up their first win, they don't end up picking it up off the back of that insane triple kill, though they lined up for him in that corner, I'm shocked he stayed alive for as long as he did, I mean the flash 
I think that was that was not their flash. I think he was blinded by his teammate, I, wasn't he? Honestly, I think he was because there are I'm, no flashes on the side of uh, SFU. So, so uh, the miscue almost cost him the round, but they do pick up their first defensive round. And uh, from this point on, I think we should we should start to see a more competitive game. I think one thing that's way more fun about watching high elo lobbies compared to um, other like kind of mixed bag. Uh, rank lobbies is that the lineups they all have these lineups like that Sova the Sova alt into the into the hookah room Massive. You don't really see that in, in these lower lobbies. Yeah, absolutely And uh, you're, you're exactly right on that and just seeing the, the difference in skill level between the last game and this game Just really highlights it all uh, especially since we just saw Ryerson. Yeah, they lost four in a row But they just took it right back even after just there was just such a, a massive plays going on that round. And I think both teams really have fallen into a groove here. And I'm super excited to see what they're going to be able to do. Hun Ra going to be uh, sitting in the back of uh, B-Site here. And CT, just super lit. And uh, Water Joby, he's just one grenade away from getting a double kill. Uh, let's see what's going to happen. Uga Bruga gets ready to do some, some smokes on the site here. It looks like they are prepped in the site here. All the utility has gone out. SFU going to be leading this charge out here as they get ready to take the entirety of the site away from Ryerson here. Uga Bruga going to be sitting in the smoke here, getting unfortunately outplayed by Christian, who is sitting in CT waiting for that elbow push. And it did end up happening here. Water Joby going to be sitting. They have the site here, but unfortunately, they do not have the spike. SFU left the spike here, so they have to send Cypher all the way back to go get it here. Hun Ra, though, super lit. Nate U as well, extremely lit here, and that's just not going to be very good for Ryerson. Uh, Christian takes out Tubular, though. That is going to be putting Ryerson in a nice uh, lead here. Yasa getting a double kill, though. And Water Joby taking out Hun Ra. Going to be bringing this into a 3v2 here. That lead quickly dissipating. Ryerson going to be just up to just their raise and their breach here. But look Looks like he, Dankster. That's going to be one of them. Incredible yeah. grenade on the link here. That's a massive pickup. Bring this into a 2v2 here with uh, the actual uh, benefit. Oh no, Water Joby taking out Pikachu. It's just going to be up to the raise here. Looks like we are going to be seeing uh, Dankster get the uh, the ult out. Is going to miss, unfortunately. But that did clear some information for him, letting him know exactly where Yasa is going to be playing for, exactly what is going to happen here. Nice jump flick onto the utility, but Yasa just going to be waiting for that headshot to happen, and he does take it. That was insane. The ult actually did come out from, uh, I believe, uh, Water Jobby there, uh, towards towards Hookah. It wasn't from, from Dangster, but nonetheless, the round still going in favor of the attackers here sfu picking up a fifth good job from them i think i think they did make quite an interesting ish or mistake was the spike in yeah. spawn or where was the, the spike so a common tactic by the attacking team you know just to, to make sure that your spike isn't dedicated and lost onto a site if you get fragged is to leave it in the corner just okay. like this and uh what ended up happening though was that they right, pushed right. on a b site okay. but they were like wait did you grab the spike i thought you had the spike and it was just you know that little miscommunication here cost a, a little bit of time here but they were able to come back on top and they did end up getting link gonna be getting taken out by dankster almost immediately here that's a really big pickup by ryerson so let's see if ryerson's gonna be able to capitalize on that and get the dub here yes i gets ready to push out here he's he knows that there's somebody in the corner here. We see his crosshair placement. He, and uh, looks like Water Joby is going to be able to take out Nate U here. It is going to be going into the 4v4 here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that raise jump at all. Though we're just going <laughs> to... Oh, that was Oh, back. what? Ooga Booga takes out Pikachu through the wall here, but he's not going to be realizing... No, he isn't realizing what is happening here. <laughs> Ooga Booga kind of sus. Taking out Dankster and Pikachu. This man checks this his corners. This man checks corners here. <laughs> Uh, but it looks like here as SFU gets ready to do some work as uh, they, they get the bomb down there. They have a two-man advantage here. And uh, Hanra and Christian going to be sitting in the back. Uh, can you just walk me through what the thought process is of Uga Booga to be able to just not get peeked out? I have no, I have no analysis on that whatsoever. The man is just... We told we we said he was shrouded in mystery earlier. I think I'm <laughs> starting to solve it. I think he's just omnis omniscient he at this is point. He the man shrouded I, in mystery I, as well. This this man plays on an ultra wide. <laughs> oh, but Christian, oh. Ooga Booga knew exactly <laughs> what he was doing when he planted that bomb. <laughs> That's an unfortunate mistake. Uh, I don't think he really had. It much of a gun did he have a rifle i think, I think he, just he just had a had pistol, had a pistol right? but i'm Uga hoping Uga went, for his not sake not only did he rush through with the bomb getting those things he planted it in such a way that he knew 45 seconds later would he take knew. out christian <laughs> that is that is the honorary 3k the vac 3k
That is insane here. We are going to be seeing Link that was unreal. Pick up the off here. And the most fun, just after the most fun round we've ever seen. But Hunra going to be taking out Link here. And it uh, looks like Water Joe going to be getting completely stunned down here. But, uh, you know, he I think he was capitalizing on that, waiting for it to happen here. They are going to be in a one-man deficit here. But, you know, SFU, they do win these. They do win the one the 4v5s here. Let's see what Water Joe is going to be able to do here. We know that if anyone can throw grenades, it is going to be him. And uh, Pikachu going to be doing what he can to hold down an Octagon here with Sova. And uh, I think that, you know, both teams have definitely found their rhythm as uh, Pikachu gets ready to do some work here. That Sova, oh, that Sova drone though, gonna be distracting Pikachu enough for uh, Yasa to get a kill here, but Christian gonna be trading out, and Tubular gonna be trading out on Christian on top of that. So we are already down to a 3v3 here. Water Joe be gonna be pushing in here. He is gonna be meeting Hanra, but he does not check his corners properly enough. But once again, it is gonna be traded out uh, to v2 yet again. But it looks like, once again, SFU on the site, but no spike. They have to run all the way back to pick it up, and that's just gonna be a massive advantage for Ryerson. Especially as we see Ukabuga get, uh, getting revealed by that information here. And uh, yeah, there's those grenades that ra both of those teams' raises are just so good at throwing. And uh, Nate, you're going to be uh, walking around uh, this very silent left. aggression here. Ukabuga is going to be worrying here. And it looks like they are going to be rotating out to A side here. Since Ukabuga does have the information that he is getting pushed by both team members. So it looks like he is going to be taking the teleport here. And uh, that is going to send. Ryerson into a flurry to roam around and uh, looks like they are gonna Ten actually seconds left. they're debating taking the teleport of themselves here they've pushed all the way out here yep there's the teleport and unfortunately it was just out of earshot for tubular but I think that uh, Uga Booga did hear it, so he is going to be waiting. And we are seeing the exact same thing just on a different site here. That Cypher Camp getting uh, some information here. Looks like Uga Booga, though, he takes out Dangster and Tubular waiting for Nate Yu. What an incredible team play here. The mesh for SFU. You were right. They do win those man down situations. I mean, SFU has been so great about trading out their players and being in spots to where even if they do get picked off, they can bring the rounds right back. And I do like the mid-aggression. You are down 7 or 6-1 in that round specifically, so you need something different. The mid-aggression was great. You got, their you got the pick, but things fell apart. Uh, your breach, Pikachu, got caught with um, a flash in hand and picked off and you know you couldn't get the double there it was a bad positioning or a bad spot for christian to be in but the round does not go their way ugabuga doing a great job in that 2v2 playing in front of the smoke and making sure they can't push in from Absolutely. the bathroom. Absolutely, and here's Water Joby utilizing that utility, but Hunra going to be capitalizing on it. He knows how, how Water Joby plays nowadays. He is going to be able to get that down, and once again, we I are going into exactly. a 4v4 now. As Yasa takes out Pikachu, but Hanra and Ugabuga both going to be getting a kill here, so it is going to be already down to a 3v3, both with one player having a massive health deficit here. Ugabuga going to be doing what he can as well to uh, rotate out and uh, meet up with the Cypher in a showers, and uh, let's see what's going to happen. Yasa going to be seeing the rays. Rays misses the ult here, and uh, let's see with a pistol here. But no, Ugabuga is gonna be able to take out the kill on Dankster here. Bring this into two v three. Let's see, Link is gonna be getting the bomb down, and it is just going to be uh, up to two members of Ryerson to uh, win this two v three situation up against not only you know some amazing players here, both Ugabuga and Link over ten kills already, but Link with an op as well. Now Christian actually he sees Link and he lets Link take out Nate Yu uh, before he takes him out. And uh, I don't know why he did that to lose the player here, uh, but let's see what's going to happen. Yasa just ro rotates right back out through U Haul and takes out Christian with a headshot. It's not necessarily a bad play to play the trigger discipline there, but you need to communicate to your teammate that you don't need to peek. Just give him a second to get the trigger dis or to get the more information. I mean, it was unfortunate that that is the way it went down, but not the worst play in mind. I mean, it, it's, it's looking pretty, pretty bad so far for. For Ryerson, you're in a bad spot here. 8 1 down, kind of getting rolled over. Everything you're throwing at them just gets just gets kind of trampled over. The trades have been amazing. You've seen it every single round. And at this point, if you're if you're Ryerson, what do you do to even salvage a little bit going into your attack? I honestly do not know, but let's see what's gonna happen here as Ryerson gets ready to uh really do some work and uh you know they gotta capitalize on this now tubular actually gonna be able to take out hunra which is uh very unfortunate here hunra is a very great player for ryerson let's see what's gonna happen here water joby gonna be shooting through the wall here not gonna be uh, seeing anybody there though uh let's see as uh the entirety of sfu gets onto b site here nice ult that is gonna cancel the plane here that's powerful let's see what's gonna happen here yasa getting ready to do some stuff your tubular gonna be taking a christian ugu we taking out pikachu nate you gets a double kill though onto the site here and that's gonna be canceling it uh, looks like, oh my god, Nate, you with a 3k. Are we going to be seeing Nate, you with a 5k here? What is going to happen? Are we going to be seeing the ace pull out? 
looks like he does have the advantage here as he does have control over the spike. He is going to be leaving that, though, in order to push out into B Hall. And uh, he's going to be coming across Tubular, who is using his drone here. Now, Nate, you, he heard the drone go out. Oh, my God. I thought we were going to be seeing the knife kill, but he has a 4K now. It is going to be down to a 1v1 here. It's just going to be Ooga Booga and Nate, you, what is going to happen here? Ooga Booga, remember, he is just built different. He does have this omniscient left. presence here. And Nate, you, just even the odds here. He is at a... Uh, he is at the opportunity to get an ace here and uh, could be changing things up here. Ooga Booga, they'll push it through. Nate, you get the Oh, ace! he gets it. And I didn't see anything. Not even a thrill. My goodness. What a fantastic ace clutch from Nate Yu. I mean, that's exactly what you need if you're Ryerson. You need someone individually coming up with a big play and nothing better than doing it on your Sentinel, on your, on your uh, Cypher here. Great job from him. Working the angles of that B site, isolating those fights perfectly, and uh, I mean, not much you can really you you can really take away from that if you're if you're SFU. I hope the momentum shifts a little bit in the favor of Ryerson trying to get this to a more even scoreline once they can switch over to the attacking Absolutely. side. Absolutely, and Ryerson really does need to do some work in, in here, and it looks like Nate, you just uh, realized that he, as he just toggles on and just pulls that ace out of nowhere. And uh, Uga Booga going to be getting the first person to get picked off by Pikachu with that op there. Water Joby going to be leading the push in here with Link and as they push out in through Hookah. And let's see what's going to happen as the entirety of Ryerson gets ready to, uh, you know, they know that they're going to be uh, dealing with some wacky pushes here by SFU. So they're going to be playing some wacky defense here. Water Joby going to be taking out Christian here, but Hanra going to be trading it right back out, bringing this into a 4v3. Let's see what Link is going to be able to do here as he gets ready to do some work onto Pikachu from Hookah into CT here. He misses the shot though. Tubular though getting ready. And unfortunately, Nate, you're going to be actually waiting for him, basically. So Tubular are going to be utilizing his reveal arrow. See if anyone pushes out here as Link gets ready to push onto the site here. He gets a more deep push onto the B site. And uh, let's see what's going to happen as they get ready. Uh, looks like the spike is going to be getting planted here. Link missing the shot there onto Nate, you. And uh, Nate, you're going to be taking out Link here. Bring this into a 2v4 here. Ryerson going to be uh, struggling here. It is going to be down to a 2v4. One, what is happening? SFU, they oh, lost it. Well, Yasa gonna be getting a 3k here, but oh. Raw taking him out. That is insane. Ryerson really doing some great work here. I thought Yasa might have had a chance to clutch it, but the jumping classic right click will take him out in the end. Three to eight. Great That's job, good retake. I mean, it got a little dicey towards the end of Yasa just kind of weaving in and out of that of that B box. That uh, B little metal tunnel thing, but unfortunately he couldn't pick up the 1v4 and it's going to go the way of Ryerson, making this a little bit more even. Economies are still great on both sides. Nate you with the Spectre is maybe not the best gun he can have in this situation, but their economy is quite low because they do want that op onto Pikachu. Both teams with an op though this round. Absolutely. Link has had that the past couple rounds, but not too much impact. I think he's gone two kills since the third round of the game. So gone a little quiet, but... And Let's see what he can do. Let's see right what they here. can do indeed, especially with... Uh, oh, here we go. The ultimate going out by Christian. Unfortunately, not going to be utilizing it in tandem with his information arrow, which could have done some more work. But uh, let's see how this is going to work out from Hanra. Going to be uh, peeking out into mid here. Unfortunately, getting taken out by Link here. And uh, that is going to be uh, detrimental for Ryerson, as uh, Hanra is a very, very good player for them. Pikachu could be holding this as well. They, uh, they, they do have a lot of uh, advantage here as far as positioning goes. But uh, losing that one man, especially when you're up against players like Uga Booga and Link, uh, is really going to make things difficult for them. Pikachu going to be doing what he can to hold these angles here. Yasa going to be pushing out. Oh, no. He missed it. He is going to be utilizing his uh, utility here as as uh, best he can given the situation here. Unfortunately, missing the shot again on Yasa. This is a 5v3 situation. Uga Booga going to be sitting in here in the smoke, but Nate Yu just going to be waiting for it, and uh, unfortunately Nate Yu is just built different, going to be able to get the headshot onto Uga Booga here, two people are going to be getting the bomb down here. Let's see, the attackers do have a one-man advantage, but are they going to be able to get the win here? Uh, Link taking out Christian here, bringing it into a two-man advantage. Dangster gets taken out as well, just be able to Nate Yu, and he does not manage to do much there. Link gets a 3k with that off. Switching sides. I'm, uh, I'm, you know, you know, I should just I should just not talk, you know. He just proves me wrong. He gets a 3K the second Casters I mention him going curse. quiet. Absolutely. I just, I, I mean, he proved me wrong. I appreciate it, Link, but uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to make me look like a fool like that. Great 3K from him on the ops. The race I takes have been very efficient so far. I mean, only losing one player to one to zero players both, like, each couple times. And uh, going to this defending side, they have a six-round advantage. This is definitely something that... 
they like to see. Hopefully they don't get complacent because the skill levels of both of these teams are still so even that this can this can the momentum can shift and this can be a comeback. I, I mean I'm not writing this game off yet. An advantage here on attack since they've got the two initiators set up and that two initiators set up with uh, Breach and Silva will allow them to get those entries extremely efficiently. Uh, but like you said though that six round advantage in the second half there that that is nothing to write off. They do have uh, you know uh, Ryerson has their work cut out for them here. They do have a lot to do going into the next round here. Water Joe beginning to flash though. Let's see we are going to be seeing that push going through. Water Joby getting ready. He wants to throw that grenade in hookah, but he's not going to be able to find the uh, the opportunity to do it. But there it is. The smoke and uh, the orb pickup is going to allow him to get that grenade off. He does get a uh, stun there, making it, uh, you know, that's the only thing he is going to be able to do here. We do still see both teams with all five players alive here. And it uh, looks like the attackers are going to be rotating on the A site here. Uh, at least the bomb is. Uh, oh, we see a, uh, a teleport go off. But no oh, yeah. So the oh. flick on the Hunra. Uh, but he is going to be getting traded out immediately by Pikachu. And let's see what's going to happen. We are going to be seeing the 4v4 here. Christian going to be doing some work and ready to run around the A site here. And uh, we do see Link holding out on a B site. Or, I'm sorry, on an A site showers. But uh, he's not going to be finding anyone as the entirety of... Uh, of Ryerson gets ready to push left. out on A main here. It looks like Christian's going to be getting the bomb down here, but Link is going to be rotating back out. He is going to be able to take out Nate U, and he does take out Christian just oh. before the spike goes down. Link with a 2k is going to be up to uh, you know, just the raise and the breach here. We've used most of their utility at this point here. Water Joby going to be getting taken out by Pikachu. Let's see what's going to happen here. Tubular takes out Pikachu, and just going to be up to uh, you know, Mr. Uh, uh, Dankster, and let's see what Dankster is going to be able to do here in the 1v3. Not going to be able to do much. Just has a classic. Nothing to lose here. If he can pick up a gun at the very no least. No time left. But uh, he is going to be able to take out one. Is he going to be able to pick up the gun? No, he's not. Link gets a 3k here to end the round here, and uh, looks like we are seeing SFU pick up 10 rounds. Uh, very interesting pistol round stuff coming out from from Ryerson as, as they use all their utility immediately and do good stuff towards that B site they got they got a water jobby down to like 70 HP right off the rip with that grenade and flash combo and you had only two defenders I think in that site I think an execute towards B would have netted them a much better uh, you know round than, than rotating back to A and allowing the uh, defenders to reset but I mean that is hindsight so we will see how they respond to losing the pistol. They only have a couple rounds to build this economy, and they're going to run in with, a, I think, one shorty and four classics. So let's see how this pans out. I think it'll pan out. out pretty well, but if they can get this round, it will be detrimental to SFU because SFU did buy after that win. And so, you know, if the, if uh, Ryerson is able to get this dub here, uh, then that will just turn the entire game around. Looks like there was a nice little trade there between uh, Link and Pikachu. They both go down here. Uh, so let's see what's going to happen in the 4v4. Uh, looking like the spike is is uh, leaning more towards A site here, but we do still see Nate U. Uh, the, uh, he is going to be soloing on the B site here. Now, he is going to be the ace man himself. Let's see what he's going to be able to do with Cypher. If he throws that cam up, he would see Water Joby sitting there. He knows that there is someone there, but I don't think he wants to give away his position just yet. I think he wants his team to uh, push on the A site and let the rotate happen. But no, he is going to be peeking prematurely here. And uh, almost gets taken out, but he is going to be able to survive here. Very, very lucky. Let's see what they're going to be able to do. It looks like Hanra going to be getting some massive damage dealt to him. And it's not looking good for Ryerson. Ryerson is at a left. massive health deficit here going into this push here. Especially as that Omen blind is going to be slowing things down. We are seeing... We are seeing the blind and the smoke go out. Yasa could be able to take out Nate Yu here. And Yasa with a double kill. Water Joby taking out Christian and Uka Booga going to be finishing it off here. We see the match score go 3 and 11. It could be the penultimate round here. For sure. I think uh, the investment from the investment from SFU uh, was definitely very smart there and definitely calculated because Link only buying up armor and a ghost and immediately going on a quest for map control there. Finds himself a pick, even into a 4v4, and and once you kind of, once you take out the swarm force, like the numbers of an eco round, you're kind of screwed. So I think that was a great job, great job from Link, calculated by there, and they can afford the uh, the Optus round because of it, but they still oh, are relying Link. on three specters. I think they... that angle, he sees oh. Nate Yu's shoulder, but he is not able to get the kill there. Nate Yu, is, uh, he, he knows that there's something waiting for him, especially with that economy difference. He, he, I think it was banking on the fact there was an op purchase this round, and it uh, looks like that was a good uh, good bet for him. He utilizes his cam to actually get some info. He knows where Link is, trying to bait it out, as you can see there, with the uh, little knife jump. Fortunately, not going quite as far as he needed to for it. Let's see what's going to happen, though. We are seeing the defenders rotating around here. 
Let's see. Sova and Ray is going to be coming up across the Rays. What is going to happen here? Tubular gets taken out by Dankster. And uh, looks like Water Joby going to be here. And that is Water Joby going to be in the position here. Now, what happened there is Sova got taken out. And I believe that Ryerson thinks that all of the rotators were taken out there uh, but unfortunately there was two rotators there so water joby is gonna be able to take out pikachu before he goes down by nate U. and uh that is gonna be putting ryerson in actually a one-man adventure sfu uh didn't work out too well for him they uh he they could have had something amazing but i do believe that sfu here with this massive advantage here uh sfu going I'm sorry, there's massive disadvantage going in this round here, but they do have the rounds to lose it, and it uh, looks like there was a nice trade out here. Both the Yeoman's picking up a kill here. Let's see what's going to happen. Hun, Hun Ra going to be getting the bomb down here. SFU not looking good for them. Ryerson might be able to take this back here. Dankster taking out Yasa, and uh, let's see what's going to happen. Just give it to Link here, and if Link can get this kill, it will be massive, but uh, the 1v3 is an off. He doesn't know the players yeah. behind him. He has no oh, idea. He does not know that uh, Ryerson sent someone behind him, and there's Christian. He is able oh. to get the kill there, and they are going to be able to pick up the off here, bringing it into 4 to 11. And uh, I do think that Ryerson has it in them to reverse this. They didn't want the op. They didn't pick it up. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> I'm, I've never been more disappointed in my life. Why did he not pick up the op? <laughs> <laughs> they, they opt for the five rifles. I mean, okay. Like you were saying, the uh, the rotate there, trying to take map control once again. We were, we're seeing a, a good bit of this from SFU. Almost ended, or it, it, it initially ended poorly, but at least one pick was taken. The man advantage, or the man disadvantage for SFU going into the actual site take was uh, incredibly detrimental for them. But luckily, they didn't fully buy that round, and they're going to, actually, I think they are eco Absolutely. in this round. Absolutely, and remember, SFU so, just needs, maybe not. Uh, you know, they just need a sultry two wins to, to close this all out. And I think Ryerson knows that, and Ryerson is going to do whatever they can to make sure that doesn't happen. Nate, you getting massive damage dealt by, by that shock arrow. That's what happens. That is such a massive push. Great aggression by Ryerson. Uh, unfortunately, though, for SFU, Water Joby goes down, so Ryerson going to be having a one-man advantage going into this round here. Let's see what they're going to be able to pull off. Looks like Link is going to be utilizing all of his utility to get onto the side as fast as he can, but he is going to be getting slowed down by that breach util here. Hot Raw picking up a double kill there. And Christian taking out Lake here. Just get to Uga Booga. Uga Booga is built different, but how different is he built? Is he 1v5 different? I think he is going to be going for the save here. <laughs> what he's looking around for? He's, he looks so defeated. I've never seen him uh, a play. <laughs> never respected a player spam su or like convey such confusion and, and just <laughs> defeat <laughs> with just a little there is a movement little bit of a downturn to the camera angle here highlighting the depression <laughs> he just <laughs> wait did he get stunned cross map what was that or was that just a camera glitch i don't even know what happened unfortunately i do think that the uh, the hamsters uh did stop running and uh we are seeing some technical difficulties on the stream here hopefully it is gonna be back up by the time we are seeing uh we are seeing Ryerson now pull up three rounds in a row here. Was not expecting to see that. As I'm sorry, two rounds in a row as we, we see them bring it into 5-11. Yeah, they ran right through him on that anti-eco. They decided to just go full, you know, you know, full aggression mode towards that B side. It worked out for them in the long run. I think that's why they're not picking up the office because they kind of just want to storm the sites. Uh, but I don't think that's really going to work in a full util gun round. So let's see how they, yeah, you know, switch up the tactics. Let's see here. To keep themselves in this Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Oh, Dankster. Nice Ooh. tracking on that Sova arrow here. Uh, and it looks like Ryerson going to be playing with the uh, the spike uh, on the ground in a rotatable position here. Uh, they're going to be waiting to get those frags and then move in. So Pikachu going to be doing what he can to pre-fire these corners, but there's not going to be anyone waiting for him. We do see Cypher utilizing his utility here to uh, just keep an overwatch on the site here, especially as Sova going to be using that drone here to, uh, a little bit early. Uh, to be honest, uh, not going to be finding too, too much, but he is going to reveal that there's nobody playing in Hookah. So we are going to be seeing Ryerson rotating out onto A site here. It looks like both teams are just uh, a little bit afraid to push out. Definitely a much more timid and information collecting start to this round. Absolutely. It looks like Ryerson, uh, they're bringing the spike here. It uh, looks like they're debating whether or not to leave it for another rotation, but I think that what they're going to be doing is... Uh, is uh, just getting ready to full stack out. I believe we're going to be seeing this on a, on 30 push in 
tight play here. Pikachu getting ready to line up the ult here. Oh, we see two ults go out here. Let's see what's going to happen because the concussion goes out as well as the ult here. Dankster going to be seeing if he can pick up a kill. The ult he is going to be able to pick up water. Joby is Nate. You picks up Lake. Those are two massive picks up here. Ukabuka going to be taking out Christian though. So this is going to be into a 3v4 here. Pikachu going to be taking out Ukabuka though. That's a massive. It's basically over here for SFU as Ryerson gets the bomb down here in a 4v1 situation here. Yasa, now he is going to be radiant, but is he going to be able to, uh, you know, clutch up a 1v4 situation here? Let's see what's going to happen. I can't expect he does too much. These cross these cross angles on this A side are impossible to clear out without teammates or without trade potential. I mean, there's no chance, and after revealing his posi position there, he's going to be taken down momentarily. Let's see, though. The team did not push go. him out. First peak. I even oh. know where the team didn't push him out fast <laughs> enough, but they didn't need to. Pikachu just built different jumping just roads. Just deleted. 6 and 11. I, I'm actually... I'm loving these set pieces. I think this is what I like to see is a non-defeated team going into their second half, going into their attacking half, relying on what works for them, what they've practiced. These set pieces look great. I love the double alt usage there from... Uh, from Pikachu and Dangster. The, uh, I also do like to see that their scoreboards are all pretty even. I mean, Link did have a heavy, heavy start, so it does put him ahead quite a bit on the uh, SFU scoreboard. But other than that, pretty even, and that's what I like to see from these high elo matchups. Absolutely, and it looks like uh, Ryerson is actually going to be uh, having a massive eco benefit here. They forced SFU into a, uh, a save round here. And uh, that's just what happens when you win three oh. in a row, I guess. So let's see what's going to happen. Dankster getting ready to push out, uh, you know, leading the charge here. It's an early yeah, teleport. Yeah, going to be stuck there in teleporter here. And that is going to be putting some pressure on Ryerson. But let's see what they're going to be able to pull off. Getting ready. And Nate, you take it out. Yasa Tubular going to be taking out Christian. But Nate, you trades it out. Take out Tubular. But Water Joby trades it out again. Taking out Nate, you. Going to be bringing this into a 3v3 here with uh, two players having massive health deficits. One side here. Dankster going to be taking out Water Joby here. Let's see what's going to happen. Uga Booga going to be pushing out here. The defense coming from the backside. Are they going to be able to take this retake here? Looks like Link at 9 HP. Not going to be seeing Dankster do his. Did he just get taken out with a blast pack? <laughs> Uga yeah, he Uga did. Gets taken out by the Hunro. preemptive blast what pack. What is happening? The preemptive blast pack for the charge in to try and deny the the plant there. I, what an interesting death. He dashes straight <laughs> into Ryerson it. And Ryerson picking up four in a row here. They really do have this comeback down. Seven to eleven. This is starting to get interesting. Starting to get a little dicey. The op is back onto Link. The full buy, full util, most likely is back onto the SFU side. Let's see how they respond to this comeback to see if they can sway this momentum that is Ooh, purely in the favor. Oh, he missed the he missed here. the shot. So be leading to a double reveal there and be long. And uh, I think SFU is ready to sweat off. They're they're ready to sweat their asses off here. They definitely do not want to lose any more hold that they already have here. Now they do still have a four round advantage, but that can be taken away in the blink of an eye here as we already saw Ryerson pulling out a four win streak. Uh basically faster than they could realize it. And let's see what's going to happen. Water Joby holding this angle extremely well. And uh, SFU really just does not want to give Ryerson an inch in this round. Definitely, once again, one of these slow starts, slow information gaining starts. And I think we're going to see a set piece once again coming out from the side of Ryerson. Let's see what's going to happen. Nice sofa information uh, drone going out there by Ryerson here. Pikachu getting ready. This double initiator push through the bathrooms here. Very good scene for Pikachu utilizing his tremor here. Is it gonna, it's not going to be catching anybody here. That flash does some work though, but Ooga Booga going to be taking out Christian here. He was unaffected by that flash here. So that brings SFU into a nice one man advantage going into this round here, and that's definitely what they need. So Yasa going to be doing whatever he can here to hold it out. Hun Ra going to be getting the plant out, but he is going to be canceling here. His tubular ults onto him. Is he going to get in the kill though? No, but a Water Joby is going to be able to get the kill here. He's going to be pushing out here, getting uh, flanked by both sides. But Link protecting him, taking out Dexter. Yasa takes out Pikachu. Going to be just a 1v5. Now, Hun Ra stuck here. The teleport. He is gonna be able to take out Yasa, and he takes out Tubular. <laughs> oh my God! They almost went for it, but it looks like SFU. At least they got the round here. They tried to get cocky, but Hun Ra did not let that happen. That was insane. I'm not sure what that was. I don't think the economy is that strong, but I do love the confidence. I think that was a fantastic defense from SFU, obviously, because of the fact that they have even five alive. 
Great job from Ooga Booga getting that initial pick. They knew that both those initiators were coming through the bathrooms. They saw both of those pieces of util, and Ooga Booga just held the angle, unaffected by the flash. Great job from him to lead his team with the man advantage. They can all stay alive. Great stuff on the retake using that Sova ult comboed with the Heaven sniper rifle from man, Link. We see Link, though, dropping a 20 bomb here. That is just insane. Definitely the man to and highlight. Let's see what's going to happen here as they get ready. We do see SFU on match point here. So Ryerson going to be pulling out all the stops here. And Ry if Ryerson is going to be able to take this round, though, they're going to be able to extend it and uh, possibly delay the inevitable here. But they do Oof. have to win five rounds in a row to even bring it into overtime. But let's see if they're going to be able to be if they're going to be able to do that. Um, Early damage. I, I don't know what caused it, but Dexter or Dangster is already on 17 points of health. Did he get tagged through the wall uh, from that off shot? I think uh, he did a little bit here. Dangster at 17 HP. That's not looking good. Nowhere to run. Definitely an early disadvantage. Link Sova taking ult. out Nate, you there. The Sova ult gonna be doing some work here. But uh, that one man disadvantage going into this round. It, oh, especially as Waterjob, he picks up Dankster here. It's not looking good for Ryerson. I think this could be the end of it here. Let's see what's gonna happen. Link gonna be holding this angle here. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, Ryerson is going to be committing to it as, uh, oh, no, SFU going to be rotating a little bit too early They're here. calling the rotate. But let's see, that's so, that uh, Omen teleport here to get a little bit of information is going to help out a lot. Water Joby going to be getting left. revealed by, the, oh, not revealed by this arrow here. It looks like Christian shot it into CT rather than out here. Water Joby. Wow, that was some great utility here. He was able to push out away from the ult, but Water Joby takes out Christian through the wall here. It's Why not linked up for Ryerson here. Tubular takes out Unbroth. Just going to be up to Pikachu. And let's see, Pikachu is able to take out Link here, but he is. Ooga Booga takes him out. That is going to be the win for SFU. That is GG's, and I think that's the same exact scoreline as we saw the previous game. That was such um, an great incredible stuff. round to watch. I just loved that from start to finish. That was just intense performance from both teams. I think these teams could play each other 10 times, and I think it'd be a 5-5. This was such an even matchup that I really, really enjoyed watching and casting. Um, I always love watching and casting these higher ELO matches. Good to see those set pieces come out. Um, I like that everything's kind of premeditated. It's not just jumping into a server and trying to hit your shots because everybody can hit their shots at this rank. Great job from both teams, and I look forward to seeing, um, you know, both of them hopefully again, even on stream. Um, and I would like to know what Kanashi yeah, thinks Kanashi, about you were, you this were able current to get a matchup. Nice top-down perspective this entire match here. So, what do you think about uh, you know these teams, especially that uh, almost a full comeback from Ryerson? Yeah, it, it was honestly a good match. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, the treadmill doesn't work as well as I would like it to. Um, <laughs> but that's just how it is. Um, but honestly, like this matchup, when I was first watching it, I was like, will the Radiant player make a difference in terms of these two teams? Um, it wasn't really Yasa who was doing like everything, though. It was pretty evenly matched when it came down to certain rounds. There were things that I wanted to point out. Um that either made or break the entire game so um round two uh link had a 4k which kind of helped them build like kind of a motivational boost but the big one was round three um sfu decided to run um decided to keep what they bought on their eco round from round two um versus ryerson who decided to buy up and in that matchup yasa was able to get like a full cleanup at the very end uh only using a stinger against vandals and phantoms and that really helped them snowball their momentum through um they were only able to get one round uh ryerson got round five between the first nine rounds um that was all uh sfu at that point um round five ugabuga had that 3k um but couldn't really lock it down that was the one where uh they they got that last shot in and it really helped them out um when it came down to it though um round 10 was the one that like if you're looking at ryerson highlights that's the one to highlight in particular um nate you had that ace that really helped them kind of find a little bit of a rhythm um it if you talk about momentum in anything i put down on my paper i wrote in big like you know crayon almost i like <laughs> scratched it i like etched it into my notebook i said momentum shift and i called it earlier 
Um, and we saw that happen. Round 11, uh, Hurrah ended up cleaning up, uh, getting him another point on the board. And round 12, even though they didn't end up winning that round, um, it did do a lot of damage. It did do... It, it stopped them a lot. It made it a lot harder. So once they got into the half and they flipped sides, um, they felt that momentum going into it. Uh, they were able to push a little bit better. And it wasn't... There were moments where they could keep the momentum for a little bit. Um, and then we saw, you know, SFU struggling to secure down the last two rounds. But eventually, you know, SFU did what they had to do. They cleaned up. They played it nice and slow and methodical. That is something that... Um, you see at this higher level that you really appreciate is teams using their utility uh, well enough in order to cover each other's backs. But overall, this game was just well well done. We, you see what momentum looks like firsthand uh, if you were to break down this match. Absolutely. Even and I think that the one thing, you know, even though Ryerson didn't end up coming out on top, uh, they, they definitely showed off that they are capable of uh, performing well in high-stress situations, especially able to come back from, from uh, you know, absolutely – nowhere and uh you know they, they had such a massive uh disadvantage but then out of nowhere you know that early on first half nate you just said i'm gonna get an ace here and i think that that really hyped up the team and i think that it allowed uh ryerson to come back with a little bit more momentum just like you said for sure so, for yeah, sure honestly like oh, oh yeah go, go ahead bro. <laughs> i mean i've i've already kind of said my piece i was just gonna say that um yeah definitely definitely a great highlighter is of this match is is just straight up momentum shifting so i think that was a great job from great cover from you kanashi and uh you know i've kind of said my piece so so i'm sorry to cut you off <laughs> no 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 i i cut you off i didn't i didn't know you were ready for it um <laughs> but yeah i i think that is gonna wrap it up for today thank you everybody for tuning in but uh before we sign off i would like to thank lmu uh san francisco state university as well as the academy of art for organizing the tournament and showcasing all of the collegiate talent that we have today um once again big thanks to the production staff we have uh, yeah san jose state my bad i'm all over the place um i can't read my own paper that i wrote uh but yeah honestly big thanks to production staff we've had a lot of you know uh talent changes over the course of the p couple days we've had uh you know different observers depending on all of our availability um and yeah this is just the first preliminary half of the Golden Coast Invitational. Um, later on, we will be seeing, you know, the higher teams rise to the top uh, once we start getting into playoffs in November. Uh, once again, thank you to Esports College and Career Pathways. They are helping us out with organization and uh, prize money in general. Once again, make sure to follow ArtU, uh, the Twitch channel here. Turn on notifications. That way you won't miss the next game and also whatever other action we decide to put on there um but yeah once again same time next week um tune in catch some more co amazing collegiate valorant action i'm kanashi i've been joined by arties and brody and we will see you right back here see you next then bye-bye <laughs>